Welcome. Welcome to uh, Class Cast number eight. We're here with Tips Out. We're here with Stay Safe. And we're here with our friend, Mr. GM, uh, Mr. Game Master Reviews, uh, the, the artist formerly known as. So, um, so we're here. In case you guys hadn't heard, we, um, we did finally get our very first update about, uh, about classic servers from Blizzard, the first thing that we've heard since, uh, since BlizzCon, actually. And uh, it's, it's honestly something that, that everybody was pretty surprised to hear. Nobody really expected anything to, to hear anything this early. But uh, before we go into that, uh, Mr. GM, do you want to you introduce yourself and uh, introduce yourself to the audience for us a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'm Mr. GM, uh, Mr. Game Master Reviews previously been doing YouTube for like years and years, 2011, you probably saw my low quality content back then, had a few views doing some uh, undocumented things. Um, but yeah, so I've recently been doing some data mining in BFA, I have a history with like fiddling with the game files, which is a, probably a bad word, fiddling? Uh, yeah, no, uh, fiddling with the game files and doing all sorts of funky stuff with it, which is, yeah, this dev thing is is awesome so hopefully we can pull it apart and kind of get an idea of what's going on with classic today yeah yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely um <clears throat> so uh let's let's go right into it um uh, basically what we heard and, and i'll uh, i'll give a quick overview and then uh, and then we'll go in a little bit deeper but what we heard so far is that they're basically already two prototypes in they're already two prototypes in and uh i mean that to me personally, that's shocking. I, I don't know about you guys. I, I was not expecting to be this far in development, having not heard anything yet, right? Yeah, well, they have at least two. They could have more, you know, who knows? Right, who knows exactly. Right, at yeah. least two. Really good point, really good point. But um, but yeah, yeah I, I thought it was something that, that very shocking, uh, very exciting to hear. And uh, there are two prototypes in, they've tried to do it two different ways, and then they explained kind of what they're doing and, and what they saw differently between the two different ways that they've done it, uh, which one was basically trying to build it from the ground up. The second way that they've been trying to do it is to, to strip down the, the current version of the game and uh, get it back to an authentic uh, representation of vanilla patch 1.112. And uh, then they kind of gave a little bit of an overview for what they want to see for the future. Um, <clears throat> Tips, do you kind of want to break down the, uh, or go into the first prototype a little bit about what they saw? Yeah, so essentially uh, during the first, first, like, I guess uh, the first rodeo, so to speak, what Blizzard was trying to do was they were trying to take the original base game, the original code, the original data, and they were trying to port it up to the modern infrastructure. So essentially, essentially take the base game and make it fit on modern hardware, modern video cards, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, after a couple of pass-throughs, they were able to pull it off, but they noticed that the game was crashing consistently. There were a lot of bugs, a lot of errors, and essentially there was, I guess, 12 less years of polish on the game. So they decided instead of porting it up from what it was originally to take a different approach and port it down. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's pretty interesting looking at, uh, looking at that, basically, because it's, uh, a lot of people were a little bit worried about that. Right, a lot of people were a little bit worried about that because they're like, well, are, are you basically taking the retail game or uh, are you, like if, if you're taking it and you're stripping it down from the retail game and you're porting it down, like you put it, uh, I think a lot of people are uh, a little bit concerned, right? Because they, they say like, well, can, can we get a little bit more uh, in-depth explanation of what that means? Overall, I, I think that uh, I got a good vibe from it personally. And uh, I know you got, Stacey, if you were talking about, especially in your, in your stream the other day, uh, there's a little bit of a discussion, discussion going on about uh, the, there was a specific phrase about similar conveniences whenever they were talking about the 12 years. <clears throat> you want to go into that? Yeah, so they said additional, at the very end of this, of this uh, water cooler discussion, if you guys have it up on your own, they said additional modern improvements will include modern anti-cheat slash botting detection, and that's really, really good in my opinion. Uh, you guys know Warden, which was the original. Do they still use Warden on retail? Do you know, Mr. GM? Yeah. I Their anti-cheat system? I think, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it's like an advanced version or a better okay. version of the vanilla one. Yeah, so back in the day, it wasn't very good. There were a lot of ways you could kind of get around it and suspect things. Updated anti-cheat, anti-body detection software. Really, really good for classic. That's a really good thing. A lot of... Yeah, that's, there's a big need for that. Mm -hmm. um, so they said updated anti-cheat, anti-body detection. Customer service, which is important. You're going to have to have like a GM team, a customer service team, and Battle.net integration. And, and this is the this is the, the the controversial part. And quote similar conveniences right. that do not affect the core gameplay experience. 
Cash so shop. what do you? <laughs> Cash shop. Panic! For everybody, raid, panic. dungeon finder. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Well, they say they say I think um, and similar conveniences, and then to try to calm people down that do not affect the core gameplay experience. So what what do you guys think could be another similar convenience uh, among the lines of anti cheat? botting detection, customer service, battle net, that wouldn't affect core gameplay. What do you think those could be? I mean, we brought it up a little bit <clears throat> earlier before we started, but hopefully things like, you know, being able to shift click into the auction house, for example, um, being able to, you know, shift compare pieces of gear, possibly, I have no idea, uh, right click somebody and put them on your ignore list, maybe something along those lines. I hope it's things that are very, very limited and very, very interface focused. Not so much, you know, gameplay, not so much meta, not so much cash shop oriented. I know I mean about that earlier, but, you know, that, that could be a possibility, but I definitely yeah. hope not. Yeah. Do you think they'll uh, go as far to add the, like, collections tab? Because obviously in vanilla you had, like, uh, mount items and pet items and stuff, and it just filled your bag if you had, like, a load of those. But nowadays, obviously, it's all spells and it's all learned into this needle interface. Do you right. think they'll go as far to do that? Because that I, technically... I th doesn't affect the core cool gameplay, but it's still obviously you know, a big change. Well, I, I think that having to manage your bank slots, your inventory slots with mounts and pets and whatever else you want to have gear sets, that that is a very formative part of Vanilla. I think that definitely would impact your gameplay experience. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I mean, that's coming from someone like me who I, I have like freaking, I, I have like five sets of gear in Vanilla. I might have five sets of gear at any given time at least. So. Anybody who's watched my streams, I've got the same issue in, in Legion, so I just look messy. But I, my bags are always full, and I always got a bunch of crap everywhere. And uh, like you said, stay safe. I, I do think that's a big part of the gameplay, uh, just like knowing how to manage your bags. And you have to have a bank character and send your consumes. I have stuff sitting in my mailbox half the time. Like, my mailbox is just, like, filled with consumes, basically, that I've just been, like, uh, porting between my two characters at all times. Um, I, think, uh, I think as far as the cash shop goes... Uh, we're, we're all pretty much on this. I, I don't know anybody who wants the cash shop in vanilla. I, I, I really don't. Uh, I think it's, you? Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been, I've been asking for that for ages yeah. on the forums, man. I mean, I just hope it comes. And but I no, think, like, no. whenever, whenever people hear cash shop, they, they automatically assume... They, they assume stuff like pay to win. They assume stuff to buy in the game for that game. Uh, I do know, and it's just something that they've been doing in their games. Like you can go in and you can buy like uh, you can buy like game time. You can buy stuff like that within the client. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even want that. I don't. I don't necessarily care for it. It's it's not a big deal to me. Um, but I do think that's different than putting the WoW token in or, or putting in even vanity pets. I don't want vanity pets. I don't want mounts. I don't want any of that stuff in Classic WoW. I don't want any of that stuff in through a cash shop in, in Classic WoW. Yeah, I think there's a very big distinction between having a cash shop icon in game that allows you to purchase things that affect your gameplay, like a WoW token, like a pet, like a mount, versus having a cash shop icon in the game that allows you to buy a service like a realm transfer or whatever was available back in vanilla. Like right now, if you go into the actual cash shop in retail WoW, you've got your mounts, you've got your pets, you've got your bundles, mm -hmm. and then I think you have something called a services tab. I wouldn't mind a services tab so long as the services were the services available back in vanilla. If there are services that were beyond what was available in vanilla, obviously I would not want that. But something like putting in a cash shop in the game, that little cash shop icon that only allows you to purchase services that pertain to vanilla that existed during vanilla. I wouldn't mind that, although I definitely would not want it to be in the game. But yeah. Hmm. Stay safe. Are you frozen? Yeah, his internet's gone down. Oh, isn't it? Uh -oh. Crap. Okay. That might be a thing. But um, it's fine. We'll just we'll just go. I'll we'll get it fixed in a second. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. I, I think another thing that, that we just talked about too was uh, talking about basically the. Uh, uh, oh, look at that! There you Stuffed. go. Yeah. No, it's just gonna be like this until uh, here. Let's let's try and get somebody else on the call here. Mr. GM, is that your dirty underwear on the floor over there? Yeah, that's it not is, good. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> looks looks like a thong, man. And no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, here, uh, I'm going to do this real quick, actually. I'm going to get somebody else on the call, and hopefully this will just, like, fix it for us for a little bit. Is this going to do anything? Oh, oh, God. No, I messed it up uh -oh. bad. You you get quality. Yeah. No, I'm going to try. If some, Hey, first person who DMs me and just wants to join the call, and I'm going to mute you so you can help us out, that would be awesome. DM me on Discord. Please, please well add, add, add a big musk. Is big musk in here? 
countdown to classic. Yeah, here we go. I got I got somebody. Uh, so yeah, basically what I was talking about was uh, let me let me add this real quick. Uh, what I was talking about was uh, having. There is that good? Oh well, we I mean it'll, it's messed up, but it's fine. Okay, at oh, least at least we got us all on the screen for now. But um, but basically, you got to crop my cam, I think. Yeah. Okay. I mean it's fine. We just we'll, we'll just we'll just we'll just roll with it for now. But um, what I was talking about whenever you whenever you mentioned the auction house stuff. If they go and add something like the shift right click stuff like that, I honestly don't really necessarily even care for that stuff because there's there's add-ons for that anyway. Like you download Auctioneer or something, or you download Aux. Those are two different auction add-ons. Um, stuff like that will be. Uh, I, I think stuff like that is if if they add it in or they don't add it in, I, I don't care for it. I don't necessarily care either way, but there's definitely add-ons for it. So it's not, I don't think it's something that people should be like, oh, I need this. Like, I have to have this. I don't think anybody's going to be in a situation where they're going to be begging for it, you know? Yeah. Honestly, based on how they've worded that phrase, I don't think they're planning on a specific feature in mind. I think they just kind of left it open-ended in case down the line somebody's playing Classic WoW and realizes, oh my God, why can I suddenly shift-click this item in the auction house? It's like, oh yeah, well that's you know one of the similar conveniences we had in mind. Because I'm <laughs> sure when they port the game down, they're probably going to miss a couple of things in that first period. I don't think any of them are going to be game breaking, but there might be some small things like that. Right clicking somebody's name to be able to ignore them. That stuff wasn't available in vanilla. And we might get a few things here and there, but I don't think they're thinking to themselves, okay, we are going to include this particular feature. I just, I, I don't think they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I really think it's going to be something minor, like the interface, like really, really minor. Oh, stay right. safe coming back. Here we go. We got him. There we go. There it is. Can we hear there you, stay is. safe? Uh, hello? There you go, dude. Turn, we got you. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, rotate your uh, phone around. Or turn on Turn on your, uh, You. I think you have your auto rotate turned off. Uh, yeah, one sec. Yeah, that's fine, too, if you just want to hold it like that. At least it works. Look at that. There we Did go. There work? it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Either way is fine. Either way is fine. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so let, let's go ahead and move on. Like uh, talking a little bit more about the second pro prototype. Um, one of the big issues. So the reason they went from the first prototype, which was to build it up from the bottom up, build, build, rebuild the game from the bottom up. That's something we had talked about. Uh, I'm sure all of us have talked about it on our streams from before. If they were if they were going to re-release this game, a lot of people had this misconception of oh they can just like put it out next Tuesday if they wanted to, but it's really not that simple. Yeah, it's not that simple at all. So like, if you go and and you want to have like a, a company in 2018 wants to release a pro uh, a product right, release a game like this, they're going to want it to be high quality. They want it to be polished, and if you were to put out basically what was the 1.12 client and just like basically spaghetti code it together to try and get it to work you're going to have issues right you're going to have issues with crashes you're going to have issues with um you're, you're going to have issues yeah. across the board with with all kinds of stuff with the current with, with basically with modern technology and then the past coding and it, it basically not linking up together and people talk about like well private servers got it to work i know for me like uh, and i can it wasn't just me but i, I upgraded my video card and uh, i have guildies who upgraded video cards and they would use the 1.12 client and they noticed way more crashes. They noticed certain things happening. Uh, you'll notice on the 1.12 client, you'll go into raids, you'll go into different things and uh, you're a lot laggier than you are in Legion with a much better computer. Like if you have a really high end computer and you're playing the game and you're not getting any lag in Legion, you can still lag in vanilla. I, I know for me personally, like on the 1.12 cli client, I get a lot of lag. I get, I, I, it's just how it works, right? So they would want to go and rebuild this game from the bottom up. And whenever they try to do that, and they try to basically spaghetti code it together, um, it, it didn't work. And that's why they're going to go and they're, they're working on stripping it down, essentially. So. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, yeah. they finished this dev water cooler talk by saying, every code check and data conversion we make brings Classic Web closer to providing that authentic experience you and we want. And I think that say, they say that to highlight, like, that's, that's what they're doing. That's where 90... Nine percent of their effort is right now is restructuring this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just based on that statement as well, I think it was abundantly clear from that update that Blizzard is very cognizant of what the community wants, and I want to give them credit for that. Only yeah. because 
you know, it was, it's been a very tumultuous seven months. We've had no idea what they were listening to and what they were rejecting. Um, up until now, we had no confirmation, literally, that Transmog wasn't going to be in the game. And we have people <laughs> on forums like that were arguing about it until a couple of days ago, basically. So I think they're very aware of, of what players want. I like that the, they tried to go the 1.1 route and then they transitioned to the 112. It kind of shows you that they were trying to please the community. They were trying to recreate the most authentic vanilla experience possible. And moving ahead, as we talk about similar conveniences and whatnot, I, I think based on their approach to, to you know, their, their original prototype, I don't think similar conveniences will mean anything beyond what was in the game from patch 1.1 to 112. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure, for sure. You specified it like transmog and achievements and stuff, so that's like completely thrown out the window with that. I mean, other features like <laughs> looking for dungeon and stuff, there's just no way, absolutely no way they would ever add that. Just imagine, like, who would that be for? Yeah, it wouldn't it's, be for, yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's, you have, okay, you essentially have two separate markets of people, and there's, yes, there's an overlap, right? There's going to be people who want to play BFA, there's going to be people who want to play Classic, and there's going to be people who want to play both. There is a, a, a little bit of overlap there. But what Blizzard needs to do is you can cast a wide net by having two separate games for two separate types of gamers. And, uh, you know, some people, some gamers like both of those things, and that's fine, that's great. Uh, I think that they get it. I think that they get it. And the line that really, like, hits home is it's, it's the last line of the thing. They, it's, it's in the last paragraph of, of the dev water cooler of the, the update. We say, or they say, we're looking forward to the challenges ahead and share your passion for the classic game. Every code check-in data conversion we make brings WoW Classic closer to providing that authentic experience you and we, they highlight that, and we want, thanks for joining us on this journey. So they, they have heard the feedback from the community. I know in my personal experience, just like, you know, you, you talk to people, you get the vibe, you get the sense that they, they want more of a no changes type of approach, or at least as much as possible, as much as they possibly can. Uh, of course, they did say they're going to add Battle.net and they're going to do some things like that. Um, which, again, that was something that everybody kind of expected as well. I think the importance comes from just doing it the right way. Uh, I know I've talked about that a lot in the past. What do you guys think about uh, Battle.net, essentially? Um, I mean, they could, I mean, you, you could look at Battle.net integration and you could think potentially, obviously, that could mean friends and cross-realm, uh, cross-faction chat and stuff like that. But, you know, it potentially could just mean that they're putting it on the launcher at the very, very minimum. Uh, that's what they mean by Battle.net integration, potentially, but probably not. It probably is some sort of, like, friends list with being able to add other players, which obviously isn't what something, like, a lot of people want. I think mm -hmm. Stay Safe said about it, about collusion and stuff like that. It's, right. uh an issue with like horde and alliance players interacting it's just not something that they like classic ever had you know I, I used to play classic i see a horde character and i would i could literally look at them and think i wouldn't understand i can I wouldn't even know how to communicate them like in real life apart from obviously the slash like wave or whatever and it's like they're speaking another language which is an awesome like emerged from an immersion standpoint it's incredible mm -hmm. you know you look at this other faction and you're like can't talk to him, he's gonna kill me, I need to get the hell out of here or take him on. Like, that's it. You know, with like Battle.net, you could be like, okay, he's killed me four times in a row, let's add him as a, as a friend and, uh, you know, see what's up sort of thing. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I think I'd rather have it read only where you can like just have your friends that you've already got. And if you really want to add someone, you have to do it outside of the game, which would probably be the best way to do it to not piss off a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But you got to think, like, I guess one argument for it is that the person... So you can't literally just whisper a Horde character if you're an alliance. They still have to accept your friend request. And if you get a friend request from some like, random guy, what are the chances you're going to accept it? So I guess that's one argument for and against. But, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, yeah. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, for me, it's very simple. Like... When you have the ability to communicate cross-faction in vanilla World of Warcraft, that opens up the door for a lot of cross-faction collusion, which was against the original TOS. Why would you implement a feature that's against your own rules? Why would you enable behavior that you've dictated in the past is toxic and is averse to what the game should be about? And on top of that, from an immersion standpoint, like you mentioned, Mr. GM, you guys all know the feeling, especially if you play it on PvP servers, you know the feeling of coming across that alliance or horde opposite faction member while you're questing an STV 
and uh, they're flagged, you're flagged, you're like, oh crap, you know, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna attack me? You know, your eyes dart to the corner of your screen, look at your HP, like, oh my God, can I take him? What's his HP? How many more quest mobs do I need? You know, all these things rush through your mind as you decide whether or not you're gonna engage this person. And it creates an incredibly primal and, and visceral fear inside your heart, like this, you know, this whole sense of suspense. Why would you ever wanna take that feeling away from the game? Um, and, and, you know, like, it, it's just insane to me. It's absolutely insane. I think it's very simple, and I'll ask the chat this. Chat, wouldn't you be down if the only way you would access Bnet is from the launcher and you just click on Classic WoW, and then that's it, you're in the game and there's nothing else? Or do you want to see any kind of, like, Bnet integration in the actual game? Like, Hey, yo. Uh, I'm back, boys. Okay. <laughs> yo. <laughs> see ya. Yo, can I, can I chime in here? So... So. On Battle.net, if you want to have someone added on Battle.net, they could very easily make it. I think, I think this is how it works on retail. You have to have their Battle.net ID. Mine is stay safe, hashtag something something is a number. Um, if you're adding a Horde character's Battle.net ID, that collusion has already happened because you had to get that ID from them off platform anyway. The collusion has already happened. So yeah, I don't think they should really foster it and yeah, that doorbell uh, or encourage it. But like in reality, the collusion has already happened. This stuff happens anyways off platform. Um, I, I don't think it's like a huge giant deal. Well, here's the thing, like uh, the other day, right? Like yesterday on stream, I was literally randomly questing somewhere and I saw a horde member. I was playing on my lines character. I saw a horde guy and I was just like doing an example on stream. Like guys, watch this. I right click his name, right. I add him to Bnet. He accepts right away. And I'm like, yo, dude, I'm questing here. Can you like not kill me? And he's like, yeah, dude, no problem. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Literally, we did this on stream yesterday and I wish somebody clipped it, but it's like, why would you want to have that kind of, like, it just takes away from a PVP server. And I, I just feel like PVP servers are meant to be these war zones where the factions hate each other, where you have no method of communicating with somebody else except like scuffed emotes. And that's an experience in and of itself. Yeah. I just don't like the idea of taking away that feeling. Well, here's the thing. Um, I mean, just being realistic about it, like they they are going to add Battle.net. Like they they are, like that's basically confirmed. Um, I mean, they, I mean it is confirmed. They said they're going to they they are going to be adding Battle.net. But uh, as much as we would like, I know for me, like Battle.net's not a big deal. I, like I I could care less for it. If it, like if it's not in the game, like I would prefer that honestly. But given that we already know that it's already in the game or that it's already going to be in the game. The thing that uh, I think needs to be conveyed and the thing that I hope Blizzard understands is that it just has to be done the right way. Just like you said, Tips, uh, it's an example. It's, it's a good example. You know, it's one of the first things I actually noticed whenever I started playing Legion is, uh, or actually it was the first time I like right clicked on an enemy horde portrait. I saw that it was like add friend and I was like, what the frick? <laughs> like, like, what, like, what the crap is going on? <laughs> so, so, like, it's so like unintuitive to me. And again, like, like people aren't stupid, right? There's other methods that exist. There's Discord. There, I mean, there's Vent, if you want to use Vent. There's uh, MySpace. There, there's a bunch of stuff. MySpace, I'm joking. But no, there's, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to communicate with people that are cross-faction, that are, that are not in the same faction as you. Um, but the problem is, is whenever you go and you enable it, and, and Stay Safe touched on it too, it's, it's you're basically you're, you're giving them the tools to uh do collusion right to set up some sort of thing like i i i think i gave this i might have given this example in the last class cast i don't remember about uh uh getting ganked at menethil harbor like people would duel each other and then they'd have like a real life friend that plays horde and like a rogue would just come and like they'd, they'd start a duel and they'd be fighting and then the real life friend on the horde side would come and gank them while they're on the boat and then the guy would hop on the boat and the guy missed the boat <laughs> while he's trying to run back i mean that's that's <laughs> admittedly funny <laughs> like Stuff yeah. like that is, is not stuff that they want to promote, and people would get in trouble for stuff like that. Um, uh, I don't know. I Like I said, in a nutshell, uh, best case scenario, like, or in my personal opinion, like I don't even want it, but they just have to know that it needs to be implemented the right way. Don't allow methods in order for you to make friends with people, cross-faction in-game, and maybe even completely shut off any sort of communication with anybody who's playing on the opposing faction on the same, on the same server, on the same realm. So, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, I also I also think it's like Mr. GM suggested. That it's very it's very likely that the extent of battle integration is just having it on the launcher. Like that that could very well be all it is. Who knows? Yeah, 
That's true. That would be good. I'd be happy. Like, you just click it and then you're in a time warp where none of yeah. this stuff existed. Yeah. Right. But uh, one thing, actually, I, I guess, kind of slightly on topic, I suppose, um, Battle for Azeroth is going to be 64-bit only. So do you think that Classic's going to be 64-bit only? You can't crack out your old Packard Bell or whatever you, you guys use back in the day and uh, play it on your 32-bit 32, 32 system. <laughs> they're, actually, they're actually removing it. So you can't actually get out an old PC and play it on it. Just kind of sad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I think that's uh, I honestly think that's probably a safe assumption to make, especially if they're going back and they're stripping it down, because uh, yeah, they probably want. Mm -hmm. Technically, and you know something to touch on. Uh, you guys remember the the Forbes article that came out back in January, which uh, if I'm if I'm right, I, I think I'm right on this that the Forbes article that came out in January was actually an interview that was conducted like right after the classic announcement with J. Allen Brack. Uh, right. But it just wasn't released until January. Yeah. And uh, he mentioned how Blizzard essentially does not want to go through and, and have to manage two MMOs. And this falls basically right in line with that, where they originally thought, like, hey, this first prototype, let's try and rebuild it. And then they realized, okay, this is not, this is not working out. And if they go in and, and they do the second prototype, basically, he, he, he basically alluded to it back then, even, even back right after BlizzCon time. So again, Stay Safe hit, said it a little bit earlier. This is all they're willing to tell us now. Who knows? They could be actually significantly farther farther than this. And I, I really, I think they are. I, I really think they do. are too. It could mean that Classic's a lot sooner than than we had uh, that we had most recently expected. Yeah, break it down for us, Mr. GM, on a technical on a technical standpoint. <laughs> Going prototype two is it a lot easier, a lot faster than prototype one? There's, I'm probably going to say some stuff, and I'm sure some like devs are going to kill me for it. Because they'll be like, "Oh, you're such an idiot." <laughs> well, 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 real quick, real quick, before you go into it, before you go into it, just to explain, you know, we, we we've we've gained some viewers and stuff since we first introduced Mr. GM. Um, the, the Mr. GM, what he does and and what he's what, what he's well known for is basically uh, data mining. He's he's done a lot of data mining in vanilla. He's done a lot of data mining in. Uh, in Legion as well, so you've seen both sides of it. You've seen both sides of the data, right? Yeah. You 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 know how it worked in the past. You know how it works now. Uh, and again, that's why we thought Mr. GM would be such a good guest to bring on because he could give us uh, quite a bit of insight into that. So uh, just wanted to hyping you up a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, time, no, go ahead, go ahead, man. Spew out some lies. But no, um, the <laughs> the second prototype does sound super interesting. Uh, from what I gather, from like when they talk about the the digging in bit and all the crazy table stuff, uh, they're basically, think of it like you've got your Legion stuff, and like I've said this before, like all the old models from the game, like people argue about new graphics and stuff, mm -hmm. like for example, they added a new bear model in Legion, that old bear model, that really you know scuffed one, is still in the game. They, ne they never remove the old models, they're still in there. So think of what they're kind of doing with the second prototype. From what I can gather, it looks like with a lot of the data it's kind of like filtering so they're saying this is all the classic data grab it from the legion stuff the things that are missing will work on and then they're doing like a massive conversion with the game files like the game files back in vanilla of tbc wrath are all in like basically english you could probably spend like two three hours looking at it and go okay this does spells and uh, as you can see like in their example on the um, dev water cooler they say the spell does one two three effects it has an aura as well it's very very layman's terms but these days, it's like everything's split into a million things. So you've got spell, and then you've got all these like crazy flag numbers and all this stuff that I just have no idea what it is. And then you've got spell effect, which is another table. And what they're doing is basically converting all that old data into um, the new data. So you've got like mm -hmm. the old um, vanilla like spells and stuff like that, and they're putting using like a massive converter to make it into uh, the new stuff. I think, you know, a conversion like that, I don't know how long that would take, but once you do it once, it's pretty much it, you know, and then it's just a case of checking absolutely everything. Like the, like the testing for something like that, because there's so many spells, like not just your average class spells, not just your, your, your spells that bosses do. There's also stuff that like quest triggers and like area triggers and things that game objects do when you click them, like something as simple as like clicking on a chair and sitting on it is probably some sort of spell in the get in the files you know probably not even like 25 percent of the like the spells that you see in the game are the ones that you see 75 percent of them are just background things that right. do a ton. 
So from like a testing point of view, they're going to need every rock flipped over. And I don't think they're going to be able to do that internally. Uh, so they, they need thousands of people to run in here and just click on everything and try everything in the world <laughs> just to make sure something isn't broken because, you know, there could be a thousand things that work and one doesn't, and that's not probably going to be good enough for them because I know what Blizzard are like, especially in more recent times, they're very, very, like, precise with what they like to, uh, to put out there. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I know they need thousands of testers, but I think we can find a couple of thousand. What do you think, Chad? <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be Would fun. you guys want to test? Would you guys like 800 here. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would not surprise me if they went and did a, did a very big beta. Uh, I, I, think, I think the beta is going to be big, and, and we can talk about that a little bit, uh, you know, just kind of touch on it. Uh, I, I do think the beta, uh, the beta for Classic or the Alpha or whatever they want to go into, I think it's going to be very important. Uh, not just to make sure that the game's up and running and can handle everybody on it. Uh, I know that's, you know, just from, from what I've heard, whenever they go into an alpha phase, at least this was the way it was with BFA, they want to basically just make sure people can play. Like, people can log in, people can play, and they can run around, and that's why whenever the alpha's up, like, half the world's not even complete and this and that. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think that's going to be important, but more so, I think, uh, a lot of the more intricate stuff and, and how they want to design little things going into the game and going off the 1.12 base. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think about the beta? I think the beta is going to be very important. Like Mr. GM said, soon. Like, Ish. <laughs> like Mr. GM said, I think it needs to be big and long, and uh, they need to flip over every single rock, right? They need to, like, we need to try to sit in every single chair that's in the game and all this, op open every door and open every chest, stuff like that. Um, I think between them restructuring these databases and, and integrating the old game with the modern hardware and software, like I think this is shaping up potentially to be a like the smoothest running, uh, most sleek version of Vanilla WoW that we've ever played on the servers or actually back in the day. It's going to be really, really sleek, I think. Yeah. The problem is at what point does the sleekness start to detract from what the original game was? And I'm not going to lie, this was my biggest fear when I was reading the part about the prototype too. I'm not a technical expert at all. I have no idea how this stuff works, but the idea of using the modern client for those that have played both vanilla and the modern game, aside from abilities, aside from like, you know, the overall differences of the games, there's a certain feeling of like extra buttery smoothness and retail that didn't exactly exist in vanilla. Vanilla still had a little bit of an edge to it. Things were just a little bit more choppy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a rational fear or not. But what happens if vanilla starts to feel so smooth that it actually feels almost like an identical clone from like an actual feel point of view to the modern game? Is that something we should be afraid of? I don't know if people understand what I'm talking about here, but so well, there, yeah. I know what you're saying. And there's a couple different examples of that that might contribute to that that immediately jump in my mind. That the spell queuing system is different between vanilla and retail. Spell queuing is more sleek in, in retail. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, or I sp spell queuing and also mm -hmm. um, uh, tabbing targets. Tab mm -hmm. targeting is really a lot different. I, I would yeah, it, it's a lot more efficient. I guess is a word for it. Uh, it, it is in retail. Wow, mm -hmm. it's almost like smart predictive tab targeting. If that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I know one thing just from my experience, like you know, w ha having played both, right? Like many of us have, mm -hmm. it, the game has such a different. Uh, it, it feels so much smoother. Part of that's the latency issue, right? Being in the U.S., part of that's the latency issue. Uh, but the other part is just like how it's coded. Everything is so smooth. The server-side spell queuing. Um, I don't know. I, I to, to be honest with you, that's not something that would. It's not something that that would worry me, and it's something that honestly I, I kind of expect. Because there's times where, like, for example, I I hit the buttons too fast. It's because I'm an athlete. I have really high, you know, really high reaction time. No, I'm just kidding. It's just how the game works, right? Like if you go like seal, judge, seal too fast, it just won't activate and you'll have the highlight around the seal, right? Mm -hmm. So you get a highlight around the seal and it just bugs. So stuff like that I'm hoping is, is fixed, right? Because that's, I mean, there's times where I've done that and then not even realized it and I miss an auto attack with the seal, right? The, the five of us that are playing Rep Paladins in vanilla uh, might have that issue, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think that's something that I I, I, I have no I, I have no qualms with that. Do you think like he, like heavy no changes people will be <laughs> like super no changes people? Uh, like, well, I mean, I, I don't know, cause cause stay safe was pretty one point one true progressive, and uh, no. Blizzard 
Blizzard hung the carrot and he was yeah. like, no, whatever, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> well, yeah, it was I like... I mean, mm -hmm. well, 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 I'm trying to look at this from Blizzard's point of view. I, I think this is the reality, and this might upset people, but I think this is how it is. The people like myself that wanted 1.1, 1.2, whatever, they wanted like the actual, all the quirks and weird balances and weird different things that happen throughout Vanilla WoW. I'm one of those people. Those people are the vast minority of the player base, of the people that will be playing Classic WoW. Um, they, like, really, Blizzard doesn't maybe have to worry about upsetting those people because they're such a hyper minority, you know? Like, most of the people that are going to be playing Classic WoW, they're not going to notice these things. They're not even going to know there was a change that took place at all, right? Like, if, if they have Legion tab targeting in Vanilla WoW, how many people are really going to know or care? How many people are, how many people are even going to know in the first place? Yeah. People, yeah, you're I right. Mean, people might not even they remember. They know that it is the same, like, the same as Legion, but... <laughs> I mean, who's going to care? <laughs> like, yeah. really? People complain about it in Legion. Like, I'm sure there's people here who, who have a, a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would be the minority. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so so kind of taking that, right, we, we, we server-side spell queuing, stuff like this might happen. We might get that sort of feel. Um, we talked about, we, we, we touched on the beta and how this is the kind of stuff that we might see. Um, oh, real quick, I, I do want to mention uh, before we go, I typed this out in the chat a little bit earlier. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to tweet at us, tweet at any of us with hashtag ClassicCast. Uh, we'll also be answering questions out of the chat as well, but if you guys want to you know, s send us some stuff on Twitter, there's probably a higher likelihood that we'll see it with chat spam and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, sorry, going forward, uh, what, do you guys, what do you guys see as... Um, as far as the release date goes, and and we, we we again like we touched on it just a little bit earlier. As far as the release date goes, what do you guys see as? Uh, how, how's your guys' opinion changed? Excuse me, sorry, I phrased that kind of weird. But how's your guys' opinion changed? Do you guys think it'll be a little bit sooner? And and how much sooner do you guys think it could be? Because a lot of us said that it couldn't be. It could possibly not even be released as far as uh, November twenty third, twenty nineteen, which would be the fifteenth anniversary. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, a week ago, a week ago, if someone had said "stay safe," I'll bet you a thousand dollars we'll hear about Classic WoW before BlizzCon, uh, this upcoming BlizzCon. I would have said, "Okay, I'll, sh I'll shake your hand." I would have bet a thousand dollars. I did not think we'd yep. hear it, and then and then we did, and then they released this water cooler Q and A. I've never been happier to be wrong. Seriously, I'm so happy yeah. to be wrong about it. I think this is really good. I think this means we're going to be getting new, more frequent updates, more frequent updates, um, possibly an earlier beta and alpha, and then release after that, mm -hmm. earlier than expected. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got to concur with Stay Safe. I'm, I'm not sure if their, I guess, anticipated release date has changed from Blizzard's side of things. I think they've always kind of known. I'm sure they picked out like a time frame when to release the game. But I think from our understanding, the fact that they've decided on patch 112, uh, I think shows that they have a very, I guess, I don't want to say rigid, but they have an idea of what they want to do. I think that's very, very important because up until now, I wasn't exactly sure they did when it came to like which patch they would use and whatnot oh. so, so that's very very i guess reassuring um does that change the fact that that we could possibly you know you see it you know before june of next year maybe maybe i mean if they have a playable demo at blizzcon for example or a larger update at blizzcon um, and stacy have actually brought this up more frequent updates uh, we actually uh, took a look at, at some of the recent bfa q and a's Apparently they've had one BFA Q&A per month for the past four or so months. And then prior to that, they were doing these similar dev water cooler updates and they were also doing one of those per month. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it possible that we get a couple more updates before BlizzCon and then buy BlizzCon a playable beta? Precedent says, yes, it's possible. So who knows? We're not entirely sure, but I feel much better. I feel like if I had to pick between June to November of 2019, I would lean more towards the June side so far. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm going to say, so I reckon 100, well, I'm going to say 70% sure there's going to be some sort of playable experience for Classic WoW at BlizzCon, right? Mm -hmm. This is... I think that'd be cool. I think it'd be great. Right? And I think this time next year, June 2019, we will all be streaming the Classic Beta. That would be nice. That'd be very One year nice. from now, you think we will be? Yeah. I think so. I really do. I, I honestly, like, I could see potentially from BlizzCon this year, there, it's going to be a lot about Classic. It's going to be a lot about 8.1, 8.2, for Battle for Azeroth, but I think they will talk about Classic as well because 
like judging from this, you can see the reason they haven't said anything for months and months is because they didn't know what they were doing. Right. Like not to say not to say they don't know what they're doing, but I mean, you know, they were trying to figure out the best way to tackle it. Okay. And now they know, and it's going to be, you know, they are just going to work and work and work because they know exactly the path they're taking to get this to work. And um, that's what's really good, honestly, because the last like couple months, you know, you read some of the things in here where they say like. We, uh, I think I found a quote which said like they were doing it for weeks and stuff. Like, yeah, like, after weeks of R and D, like weeks, <laughs> like they've been hard at work with yeah. this. And um, it's yeah, they're now on the right path. I honestly would love to see a classic Q and A coming out of this because there are so many questions that people have. Um, yeah, and Blizzard, mm -hmm. if you're watching, please <laughs> classic Q and A soon. I need it. I need it. So many questions, literally. Like it could go on for hours because people just yeah it's just um it's they've given us this but now people are going to talk about this forever i think right. if they don't give us any more updates until blizzcon i think even down to like just before blizzcon people will still be talking about this dev water cooler mm -hmm. yeah and i think uh having something eight months right eight months after the initial announcement finally getting something new uh it's it's very relieving it's something a lot of people have been complaining about for some time now. But finally relieving that we got something, and it opens the door, like you said, to, to get a lot more news, like, like both of you guys said, um, to, to get more news going forward, maybe to start getting some, some Q&As. I think we could start getting some Q&As after the BFA launch. Uh, I, I really think after BFA launches, they're going to be hard on, uh, on Advertising Classic. They're going to be real hard on Advertising Classic and uh, going into that so much more. Going into uh, going into class or sorry, going to I almost called it ClassCon myself. <laughs> going into BlizzCon, <laughs> I think that uh, if they got some sort of alpha or something available to play on the floor, like you said, would be awesome. I think it might be even sooner than June before uh, before they start dishing out some alpha keys and and beta keys, if that's the case. I yeah, think. I mean, I think I think just after BlizzCon, honestly, there'll be an alpha. I think we're playing. Yeah. I think. There'll either be some sort of like closed alpha where they're showing footage like Blizzard officially by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Before the end of this year, I think we will see some sort of gameplay of Classic WoW. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, from like the sounds of how they're doing right now, like as I said, they've, they've probably got some sort of playable-ish demo, like some like completely ripped out version of uh, the BFA client working right now. So, you know, yeah. they could honestly put out a tease of, like, a dwarf running around the, like, Coleridge Valley, and I would just freak out. I'd be like, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, there's, what, two months till BFA is out, five months till BlizzCon. I, I don't think we'll have, I don't think we'll have an alpha or beta until BlizzCon. Five months from now, I think it's probably maybe realistic that we could be playing that. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I, I think a beta could be as soon as January of next year. Yeah, like wow. at the beginning of the beta um i think alpha though the the, the way i think they said this is yeah uh, alpha beta inter i use those terms interchangeably but like some kind of playable something. version for the public yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they said with bfa like uh, i think the way they're going to do alphas and betas now uh, alphas are going to be essentially a kind of broken version of the game without all the features and throughout the alpha cycle they're going to add the features in which is what they did with bfa as soon as all the features were in they turned to beta because beta is polishing and making sure everything's working. But yeah, I think, you know, with alpha, they'll have this, like the first version of alpha classic is going to be this most scuffed, crazy version you'll ever see. And they'll be missing assets and all sorts of craziness. And then I think throughout the cycle, when they get to a point where they're like, okay, everything's in now, let's go to beta and like open this up for like thousands more people. So that's basically what they've done with the BFA alpha and beta. And I think that's gone really well for them. So I think they're going to look at that and go, okay, that's a, good way to do it we'll do that with classic mm -hmm. especially with mm -hmm. a game like world of warcraft it's so difficult to test because there is so much to it like it's not yeah. like a platformer or something where there's only like you know a couple thousand different scenarios with 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 like mmos there's millions there's millions of things you can do and right. uh, they got to get people to do everything yeah so this is something we haven't we haven't quite touched on yet uh, but 1.12 patch is what they've decided is going to be the base of, of what they're basing the entire thing off of. Uh, that's, they say that that's the most complete version of vanilla. Uh, that's probably what people are the most familiar with whenever they think of vanilla WoW, whenever they think of classic WoW. Uh, actually, Mr. GM, let's start with you. How do you feel about, the, uh, how do you feel about going with 1.12? Uh, it depends how much of 1.12 they use. 
Okay. Uh, I guess classes and stuff were at a point where they presumably would be at their best point, I, I, I guess, because they're at the end of vanilla, they're like, hey, this is how it's going to be. Uh, Content-wise, I would not want a launch with Nax. That would just Absolutely. be the most foolish thing they could ever do. Yep. Um, I guess talents as well were pretty much like up to spec. You know, with uh, with for, for like whatever, however long you know people have been playing undocumented servers, <laughs> they've always had that. You know, people have played with these talents. People have played with these this um, the way that the classes were balanced. I think honestly, from that point of view, I think a lot of people are going to be happy that they like if they are good on current servers doing um like playing a rogue they'll be good on classic wow right um because you know one one a class could be rubbish and then by 112 it could be a lot better and it would be a weird way to play where you could be like you if it did start one one and you were like i don't want to play this class now because they're crap but i'm going to start playing it when like patch one six comes out you know it just wouldn't it would just be weird it would be a really strange scenario for classes to have that kind of foresight um but yeah i don't know i I think it's okay. Honestly, it just depends what kind of PvE and PvP content. There's a massive discussion with Battlegrounds and the Honor System. Yeah. And that that's like, <laughs> you could talk about that for hours if they're going to do anything with that. Yeah. That's the kind of but, stuff I think that they should, uh, that, those are the kind of things that I think they want to address in the beta, personally. I, I think that's stuff that they need to go through and uh yeah. like how, how does having like the the honor system in, from in from the start affect the game? How does having Battlegrounds in from the start affect the game? If you have battlegrounds, if you have the honor system, can you get honor rewards from the beginning? There's there's so many different questions to ask there, and and I think I think the beta is going to be big time on that. Uh, we'll we'll probably get into the beta a little bit more like on on a later episode, um, but it is it is interesting that it's already starting to come up. Uh, tips, what do you think about the one point twelve? I mean, I think the conversation about classic just started. I mm -hmm. think everything else prior to June fifteenth. It was all white noise. It was all irrelevant. Speculation. Now, speculation. Mm -hmm. Now we finally have our framework and we understand how we can actually like build this game. Um, I made a video a couple of months back called the ideal Franken patch. And I kind of broke down what I personally would like to see, or at least what I thought we would probably see. And I still lean towards that direction. I think ultimately they'll take patch 112 with all of the class balancing, with all of the quests and quest hubs that were introduced periodically throughout vanilla. They'll take all of the flight paths. They'll probably take the upgraded mount system. Um, and they'll. the only thing that they're probably thinking about staggering right now is the content itself, the raids themselves. There is no scenario in my mind where I see Blizzard say, oh, let's release Naxx at launch. The game would be dead on arrival. So mm -hmm. I don't think they'll do that. But everything else, I mean, another really big one for me is itemization. That probably needs to be progressive. I think Blizzard really needs yep. to understand that that is a very, very big deal in vanilla. So many items got changed to make content so much easier. I really hope they go progressive with the itemization. Um, there are a lot of things that that, um, that we really have to sit down and talk about. I mean, Mr. GM mentioned Battlegrounds, and I think they actually used the Battlegrounds example in the Dev Water Cooler update. And it made it seem like they actually want to release Battlegrounds at the start, which I'm not sure is the best idea. Right. I feel like now is the opportunity for all of us in the community to kind of open up those patch notes and think to ourselves, okay, this feature, should it come at the start? Should it come when it did? Or should it come at the very end? We don't really know. And mm -hmm. I think now is the time to start talking about it. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think one of the biggest arguments for the Battlegrounds thing is you're like, I don't know how much of the percent of classic players only play classic for pvp you know you're completely okay. singling out those people if you don't have an honor system of battlegrounds at launch hmm. that's probably a question they're asking themselves um, and i don't know how that particular audience will feel about that yeah. i don't know it's I, you know i used to do casual pvp in in uh, vanilla but yeah. i mean hardcore pvp is how do you think they'll feel about it yeah. i guess it's, yeah uh, I want to go into that a little bit because I uh, just because I have some experience with you know just talking to other friends and stuff who guys who were like Gen One rankers and whatnot. Uh, actually, stay safe. Uh, I, I, two things with stay safe. Stay safe. Uh, you were ranking Gen One uh, in the past, and uh, also I know that you were a big one point one guy uh, initially. I know you said you, you had said in the past that it's not like a deal breaker or anything <laughs> if it's one point twelve, but you would like to see no. one point one. You thought it would be cool to see one point one, even though like yeah. you thought one point twelve was just fine too. I had sort of like a selfish desire. I wanted 1.1. I wanted to relive vanilla well as it was with all the weird changes and quirks and, and rebalancing and adding quests and re-itemizing. I wanted it how it was back in the day. Now, 
though that was like my selfish desire, I understand that that probably wasn't best. Uh, that that wouldn't have been best for for Classic WoW. It right. would have been very hard developmentally for Blizzard to pull that off. Very very hard for them. You would have had people. You would have had to have the players. You know, every couple of weeks downloading new patches or something like that to update the game. Like it would have been ridiculous because um, you would have been running it off of several different patches. Um, mm. It would have been very. I think it would have been a big turnoff to new players that hadn't played, that don't have any experience at all with classic or vanilla. It would have been like a, a lot to wrap your head around, because mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't have like that. Going through that cycle, it doesn't have like that Blizzard modern polish, you know. Yeah. Whereas running off of one static patch does, or it would. Um, but that's what I wanted. Yeah. But you're right. It's not. A, it wasn't a deal breaker for me. I think this is probably what's best for classic. I was running off of patch 1.12. I feel like the discussion right now is. No longer, what's going to, are we going to have Dungeon Finder or Raid Finder or Transmog? Or, I mean, they explicitly <laughs> say no Transmog. They, they explicitly said it. No yeah. Transmog achievements. Mm -hmm. And uh, other things that effectively didn't weren't in the original game data will not exist. So I feel like I can kind of rest easy about that now. And I feel like we, we, like we can move the discussion past that and talk about... Um, we can talk about like uh, their, their release timeline. Will there be re-itemization? Will there be uh, what rates will be out on release? Will there be an right. honor system? Will there be battlegrounds? Um, stuff like that. That's that's where I feel like the discussion is at right now. They completely they completely uh, glossed over that, uh, probably to instigate a discussion like we're having right now. Yeah. 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 I agree. I, I think agree. I, I think mm -hmm. talking is is good. I mean, discussion is good. It's it's good to get together and talk about these things and and throw things around. And uh, I, I think it allows the um, you know not not that we speak for the entire community or anything at all. But I think it's good for um, for Blizzard to see that too, that, that people are discussing it, that there's hype behind it. You know, that I, like massive, ma just like a big just shot in the arm for, uh, for, for classic hype whenever they announce this thing. I mean, this, what, one page article and it, everybody was freaking turned on their heads about it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that, uh, <clears throat> sorry, voice crack. I think that uh, uh, going, going back to what Mr. GM said about the rankers, uh, about people who, who want to play classic to exclusively PvP, that's like their main focus. The, I, I have a lot of friends who, who are hardcore PvPers. Uh, some of them have said, you know, just kind of casual conversation, we're, we're talking about it, we're discussing it. They've said that they're worried that if they don't put the honor system in from the start, that there's not going to be enough to do in Vanilla WoW. Now, these are the guys who are playing like 16 hours a day. These are the guys getting 12, like 2 million honor a week to, to try and get Grand Marshal as fast as possible in the first three months of, of, uh, of a server launch or something. Yeah. And there might not be enough for them to do, but they are yes. probably less than 1% of the player base. Yeah. I think if, if a new player or a casual player opens up Classic WoW and they have to one level to 60, level their professions, find a guild, make friends, do dungeons, they have to get their prebis, they've got to start raiding. If they're trying to start ranking on top of that, like I think there's actually a lot to do. I think there's, there's a lot to do. And uh, I think it can be very overwhelming to have that honor system from the get-go. Also, I think having that honor system in the game from the get-go, um, I mean, by month three and a half or month four, you're going to have people that are rank 14. Having rank 14 people in that very, very good high-end gear very early on on the server, it really trivializes a lot of the PvE mm -hmm. content. By Blackwing Layer, by the time Blackwing Layer is out, what, on month six or seven, whenever it comes out, um, you can have an entire raid roster of full of rank 14 DPS. Right. Um, it, it re if you want the hardest experience that Classic can offer, um, you won't uh, you won't have the honor system in from the get-go. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and honestly, like, at the end of the day, um, as great as it is to have, you know, battlegrounds at launch and whatnot, wouldn't it be a lot more exciting to have like a couple of months of South Shore versus Terran Mill? A couple of months where like world PvP is the only PvP you can do. Yeah, I think it'd be like, it'd be really hype first of all. And then second of all, it would be even more hype when you finally know that battlegrounds are, are coming. It would be like an entire event the server would be like completely hyped on about. And I think if we treated these patches more like events, I think uh, 
I just think it would be more beneficial. I think it would also synergize very well with the modern game where Blizzard could be like, okay, we're releasing a new patch for BFA. And then a couple months later, two months later, they go, okay, now we're releasing the Battlegrounds for, for Classic, for example. Yep. And kind of, you know, create a symbiotic relationship between the two games. So, so and that kind of goes back to, to what I was saying where it's like you have two different markets, but there might be there might be some overlap there. And, and those people who like both, like the, they might like both, you know, that's fine. Uh, that's that's on them. I think that, uh, you know, like Stacey have said, you're you're hitting such a small target audience. If, if you're just focusing on those guys, you know, those guys who are playing like 16 hours a day, it's the less than 1% more than likely. And uh, I, I do think the world PvP is going to be good. I, I think if they do that, the world PvP is going to be good. You're going to get that authentic classic experience, that authentic vanilla experience that people want to get. And uh, I think that's something to be very excited about. I like what you said about events. Because a lot of stuff like this, it is treated as an event, right? New patch comes out, it is an event. It is a big deal. It is something to be excited about. Um, <clears throat> I think going forward, yeah, only 16 hours. Yeah, going going forward, uh, that's something that I think they should consider. Is like whenever whenever there is something big that happens in any game, but, but let's say in Vanilla WoW, it's going to turn into an event, and, and you should accept it as that. And whether that's the player base, whether that's Blizzard, whether that's whoever it is, uh, I, I think that's a big deal. I really like that. Do you think, um, like, with patch cycles and stuff, like, do you think they're just going to make up, like, kind of, like, hybrid patches or, like, patches of release? Like, say if they were going to do, like, a progressive PvE release, like, the first one, do you think they'll be, like, um, do you think they'll just go straight off the one to patch notes or whatever it is or do you think they'll just kind of make it up as they go along like they'll follow the original formula but they wouldn't do like the exact patch if you know what i mean if that makes sense it's interesting that you bring that up i mean obviously some patches in vanilla lasted a lot longer than others and do they want to cut down the time between patches do they want to increase the time between other patches i don't really know they're really going to pick and choose i think the easiest thing would obviously to be go uh, would obviously to go uh, be to go patch by patch like 1.4 mysteries of mar or 1.2 mysteries of maradon or whatever and then so on and so forth don't release maradon till it was released back in the day don't release to armor till it was released back in the day but could i see a push for for blizzard thinking to themselves okay um maradon and dire mall are dungeons and uh maybe we want all of our dungeons in at launch they might do that, although, again, it, it does potentially trivialize raid content. And at the end of the day, why would you create more work for yourself if Blizzard? You already have a timeline that you've used back in the day. You know it's successful. Other servers use that timeline, and it's successful. Why mess around with something that's worked for so long? And, again, will be less will be less work for you. I mean, I, I, yeah. I like the original timeline. I really like the original yeah, timeline. Would you want ZG, ZG earlier? No. Absolutely not. No yeah. way. <laughs> no way. No yeah. way. Yeah, I think, do you want to go I into think, that? Yeah, if, if they're going to do a progressive timeline with content and itemization updates and stuff like that, and I think they should. I think it would be stupid not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think they should, even though they're running off patch 1.12. Uh, I actually just lost my train of thought. Yeah, I, I think they should do that. Yeah. And I, I, think they, I, think that they, I think they should follow um, the actual vanilla release timeline. Like yeah. to, to, to the week, probably. Right. And when Mr. GM mentioned ZG, uh, and, and what, like, what, what would it mean if ZG were to come out earlier? If ZG came out earlier, like, yeah, uh, yeah Blackwing Lair and, uh, and Molten Corn and Nixie would all be trivialized. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good, there's a lot of really good, really good gear in there. Spell power gear, stuff yeah. like that. Spell yeah. hit, all that stuff. And I, and I actually think the same thing with, uh, to a lesser extent, you know, like Tip said, I mean, what if they want to release Dire Maul and Mordon at the beginning? Uh, I think to a lesser extent, Dire Maul uh, kind of has the same effect with the world buffs and now you're chasing parses and stuff like this. Uh, I, I love the original release schedule of, you know, six months between Nax and the end, whatever the end means. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, I, I think all that stuff is great, man. Uh, I, I, I really liked the way that it was originally done in Vanilla WoW. Um, and, and I think I think that they should keep it that way, absolutely. Do you think um, they'll use the exact same gaps? For how long? I think they around? should. I think they should. I think that would be yeah. a good idea. It was super quick though. Like if you look at like uh, like some of them like really quick. If there's like a bar chart of like all the patch cycles, mm -hmm. and some of them it's so sporadic. Like some of them are like kind of quick. Some of them are super long. It's it's pretty crazy. Right. Well, some some patches are bigger than others, right? 
So some some patches are they, they have a bigger impact on the game than others. Like 1.2 was was Moradon, 1.3 was Dire Maul, uh, 1.4 was the Honor System. Like there there's different things that happened at, at different times. Uh, also in 1.4, this is whenever they got rid of the tier two gear that was dropping in Molten Core, right? So whenever they go and they get rid of this tier two gear, the people who got it got it already. But they also took it out, and then I believe it was re-itemized in... I don't think it was re-itemized until it was reintroduced in 1.6. Of course, you could still get the head and the legs. Uh, legs from Rag and head from Anixia. But um, I, I think that, you know, the, the reason that a lot of the patches were kind of sporadic, like they might have a, a few patches coming out quick, uh, I believe, I, I believe the, the European release was on the 1.2 patch. Yeah. Was it not? Yeah. Was, yeah. So, so European release was on the well, the one point two patch. So European you think players follow that too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't, I don't think Europeans I... get the game a month late. Yeah, Europeans so get the game a month I'm late. At, I'm looking at this. So one one came out on J November seventh, two thousand four. Mm -hmm. One five with Battlegrounds was June. So that's what like. Uh, say, say the six first one months. more time. Six one months. months. Six months. Six months till BGs, basically. Six and a half months till BGs from launch. I think that's fine, man. I think that's awesome, honestly. Like, world PvP is great in vanilla. Experiencing South Shore versus yeah. Terran Vale, it's such an epic experience. Everyone's got to do it at least once. Yeah. And then having a period of time, even when they release the BGs, not having the battle masters in the cities, having to actually run to the portal and queue up from the portals in the Northern Barrens and stuff like that. I think that's super, super important. It cultivates community. It helps people get to know each other, allows you to meet the people that are going into the queue with you. Like, I know all of those things got changed eventually, but they do have some merit and they do have some novelty that I think every player at least deserves to experience on some level once or twice. I think uh, as well, you got to think of it like back then, I assume I'm, I wasn't there that early, but like they didn't really know what a battleground was. Like at least now they launch a 1-1 of well, a simulated one one let's say and they got six months to prepare for something they know that's coming you know back then they were right. like what the hell is this mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know yeah. so they will have like time to obviously go out like level up get like ready and kind of practice in the world with world pvp because i'm sure world pvp will still exist even if there wasn't an honor system yeah. because you know absolutely that's an interesting thing you bring up because of prior knowledge and people having played yeah. through this game for you know over a decade now you'll never actually be able to like recreate an actual timeline. For example, a really good example of this is, you know, back when Molten Core came out, or when Vanilla Launch came out with, with the Nixie's Layer and Molten Core. When, with Classic WoW, you're gonna have people that are capitalizing on literally every lockout possible, like getting mm -hmm. a full clear, probably split runs as well. Back in actual Vanilla WoW, 2004, 2005, um, you had guilds progressing through Molten Core for months. You had guilds wiping on Anixia for months because they didn't know what they were doing. We're going to see people going into like uh, the next tier of raids with the absolute best gear they can possibly have because they they already know the fights. They'll be able to like capitalize on every single lockout that they possibly can. Uh, so like uh, yeah, it, it, it's going to be it, you'll never be able to recreate that that exact timeline. So that brings up or, the question or, or the difficulty of of the next raid that's coming yeah. out. So do you alter the difficulty? Do you use bosses in previous states, pre-nerfed states? I mean, I know on, on you know, in, in certain servers, you know, you play against Ragnaros. That wasn't the Ragnaros that was killed by death and taxes back in the day. That's the Ragnaros in patch 112. You know, so it's like, yeah, it's like we don't even know which versions of the bosses we're going to get. Maybe the bosses are a lot harder. We have no idea. And if they are really easy, does Blizzard say, okay, 10% buff across all boss HP, armor, resistance, and health values? I, well, I have no the... idea. If the problem, the problem is that, well, it's not really a problem, it's just the reality, it, it's whatever it is, that people will have more lockouts worth of gear going into the next raid. That's the, that's the issue that we're going to have a classic WoW and that people have seen on undocumented servers. If you really want to try to fix it, you don't buff bosses or buff raids, you just speed up content release timelines, right? You try, you try to bring it down. Let's say back in the day, guilds had six weeks worth of full Blackwing layer clears okay. because they had to progress through Blackwing layer and uh, they didn't have full clears every week and they were wiping on, you know, brood lore, stuff like that. If you really wanted to solve the issue, you would just, you'd only, you, you'd have eight weeks between BWL release and AQ40 release, right? Mm. To, to do that, to fix that problem. I don't really think it's, I think it is what it is. That's just the yeah. way it is. You can't, you can't, you know, erase people's knowledge going into the game. You know, that's just yeah. the reality of the situation. I agree. I, I just raised the question. Well, yeah. Like, uh, I think Chinglish mentioned this in another, uh, 
the other uh, classic cast, the players have got better. You know, he yeah. said he, like back then he was clicking and like uh, keyboard turning and all sorts. And now, these days, like people, like the skill level in general, like your average noob is yeah. actually probably pretty damn good compared to like an old vanilla player. Right. Like the, the, not only is the skill cap higher, but, but the skill floor has also increased quite a bit too. Um, yeah, I actually think that whenever you're talking about a 1.12 uh, base, right, with talents, with skills, all the other stuff that comes with 1.12 uh, from, from a class design standpoint, I, I don't think it's out of the question for them to look at uh, tuning the, the earlier content to match the initial intended difficulty. Uh, I don't think that's something that, that they should just do. I don't think that's something they should just do at all. But I do think that's something that whenever they get into the beta, they're probably going to have to look at. Whenever they get into the beta, they're probably going to have to look at, okay, what are the kill times with, as, as is? What are the kill times whenever we, okay, let's, let's add a little bit of health. Let's add a little bit of this. Let's add a little bit of that. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, you, I think you, that's stuff they really got to look at very closely to not trivialize you think they it. Go that deep maybe they should test that. Yeah, maybe they should, maybe they should, because what you'd have to do is calculate, you know, okay, this is our raids DPS with 1.12 uh, talents, and this is our raids healing output with 1.12 talents, and et cetera. This, the, the TPS we have is as warrior tanks and stuff like this, and then compare it. You'd go in and retest it with 1.1 talents and compare the difference and see, okay, the boss time, the boss kill times are 30 seconds fast with 1.12. Mm -hmm. So let's add, you know, 30 seconds worth more of HP to the bosses, You'd, like something like that. Something I, like I'm that. actually, yeah. I'm not totally against that, actually. I mean, with uh, with BFA, they have like they're doing ray testing at the moment on the beta. I think how it would work with Classic, I would imagine, in the beta and alpha and stuff, you'll test the first raids they're releasing, and then they'll have a PTR, which will have the next patch's content for them to kind of test and stuff like that. I think that's probably the best way they're gonna do it. Like you know, as you said, you just see like you know they'll try and kill it and see what the health is like and how they're doing, and then they'll kind of scale it that way. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think purists will be annoyed if they make changes like that? absolutely Probably, i think yeah. they would be yeah like yeah. Uh, we're talking about it right now in a vacuum right we're just like spitballing here i think the biggest issue when it comes to altering like damage and health values is all of a sudden is molten core as hard as next ramus and what i mean by that is all of a sudden you've made molten core proportionately as difficult as it was back in the day that's a big problem because but if you have a situation where an X Ramus, which you obviously wouldn't change at all because it's tuned for, you know, 112 basically, um, an X Ramus could potentially be easier than Molten Core because the damage is directly proportional in both instances. I'm not saying exactly easier, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. I, I there's think I know what you're trying to say, yeah. There's less continuity and progression with the raids. All the raids will feel like very similar difficulty wise. And I'm not sure that's the best thing to do. And like, we, you do have to, you do have to consider the fact that while like, us maybe here and a lot of people in the chat, you guys are gonna be clearing Molten Core really, really fast. Um, even though the average gamer has improved, I still don't think more than, you know, 20% of the players are gonna hit level 60 within the first six months. There's still gonna be people wiping on dead mines a year into classic. There's still gonna, yeah. they're just there, there's some people that just, even though they're really good, maybe even like very good at the modern game today, they haven't been exposed to how the game worked back in the day and the requirements and then just different things like thread and so on all that stuff requires kind of a different skill set and i think a lot of people are still going to have issues with that and subsequently still not perform very well in raids and clear content as fast as we think so maybe we don't need to buff things i don't know we're just spitballing back and forth here yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to kind of real quick bring up changes and their implications because we were talking we were, we're kind of it's on topic right now okay mm -hmm. Run, running classic wow off of patch 1.12 that's technically a change that's not how like and, and progressing your molten core on 1.12 with 1.12 talents that's a change that that is not in line with no changes right that's not how molten core was originally progressed through so we've already sort of deviated from the no changes thing so talking about rebalancing boss hp like that's an implication of running off of 1.12, which is a change already, right? Right. Every change you can possibly make, there are implications, and this is one of them. Another one, another big one that we have to talk about, and we've talked about this in the past, is um, <laughs> if, you know, back in the day, the server caps were 3,000. If we have 8,000 cap servers uh, with Classic WoW, do we have dynamic respawns? Like, how do you deal with that? Do you have dynamic herb respawns and, and or node respawns? With every change that you can, you can possibly make, there are implications and, and things you'll have to do to accommodate that first initial change. It's like, what's it called? The butterfly effect almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Slippery slope. <laughs> for me, mm -hmm. like, I, 
it, it, to me, it's like, what's your definition of no changes? And for me, I agree. it's like anything between 1.1 1. 1 to 1.12 1. is that that would be vanilla wow to me, right? As I long agree. as it's right. got a one in right. there. That to me, that's that's vanilla wow. That's no changes. However, right? <laughs> However, uh, whenever it comes to and, and, I, and I've mentioned this for a while now, if they decide to do 1.12 instead of a true progressive, which they have, I do think that opens the door, right? That opens the door for uh, them probably looking at tuning the early content, like what I was saying. And uh, while I would still consider the 1.12 thing to be no changes, uh, it's like you, you might have to make adjustments to accommodate for the situation. Um, that's a rough one. That's a, that's a real rough one. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to go no changes off a of principle or do you want to try and just kind of like, okay, we, we got it. This is here. So we got to match this and do, it, it ends up being kind of a rough thing, uh, a, a rough thing to that's, decide. That's what I'm kind of saying. Cause you, you say, or saying you go, no changes off a of principle, but like progressing through molten core with 1.12 talents is already a change. I feel like, I almost feel like an, an accommodation needs to be made, right. To, to keep the content at it, at the level of difficulty it was uh when when rating with 1.12 or sorry with 1.1 talents you know what i mean i see what you're saying i mean personally i i definitely fall in the camp of anything that happened from 1.1 1 .1 to 112 no matter where we started i personally don't consider that that a change but i think definitely like you know i think we have to be very careful of allowing anything else like now that we've just had this conversation I think it's abundantly clear they should not mess with the damage values or health values. Like it's already opened up a can of worms and we've only been discussing it for like 15 minutes. Like when in doubt, stick to principle, keep it no changes. Yes, you could technically call, you know, 112 at launch a change or an adjustment, whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, I feel like if we define the scope of changes to that and we restrict it just to that one, I think it's, it's much better. I, I just, uh, already like what we're talking and it's it just sounds like things are devolving into into pandora's box so. well and 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 that's yeah. that's the thing but it's like like for real like i i think again i think it's something that they're that they should test i i honestly think that it's something that they should test absolutely just because like from from a one to no right one to no and and two i mean that's that's their job as a company like they're going to end up doing yeah. it I, I would think not that they're going to end up like changing the values or anything like that but it's like, what do you want? Do you want the real vanilla experience or, or do you want the private server experience? Right? That's the question I think a lot of people got to ask themselves. Um, yeah. And to, to honest, I think them testing just... it and having these conversations is really important. Just like talking about, okay, if they do this, how does yeah. this affect this? Stuff yeah. like that. That's a really important yeah. conversation. And I think they should test it. Just being more pragmatic have, about it, I guess. Number. They could put any old number on there. You wouldn't know that it wasn't the, van the original vanilla number. You know, potentially private servers weren't correct or aren't correct with their health values and stuff. Exactly. So. Yeah. So we don't even know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's the big was. thing. <laughs> well, and, and, and that's something that we've talked about, too, in the past. Uh, like, for, for example, a lot of the a lot of the values like you, you might play on a private server and you might go and, and you might do the raid content and this and that. And, and while a lot of that stuff is like, OK, well, we have the data on this. Like we know how this works and how that works. But there's so much guess and check work that goes into doing a private server that and it's it's been so long and it's been so many years that it's so hard to say like what is actually right or wrong like what what is that like how was it actually and uh that goes back to, again to what i was saying like that's why i think it's important to test this so you can know like i i think it would be really important for them to go into the beta and just test it put it out there just so you know right hmm. yeah i think it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a vi oh, are you muted no Am okay <laughs> Uh, so I just saw like screen flickering for a second. That might have been on my end, but I just think it's going to be a very discussion heavy next couple of months. Yes. So if you if you guys have an opinion one way or the other, like now is the time to hit the forums, to hit Battle.net, Classic WoW subreddit. Now is the time to vocalize because honestly, this will determine what game we get. I think at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, um, I think with that, is there anything specific you guys want to want to touch on before we go into a little bit of Q and A? uh just wanted to mention as i said earlier like with you guys uh people in the chat if you ever get the opportunity to if you do play legion at the moment if you do there's a pvp rule called south shore versus Terra mill and if you go into that you can actually see kind of like a how what what it would be like because what they've done with that they've literally ported the tarot the old hillsbrand map into legion and you've got the the old map you've got the old models you've got all the old textures and stuff so 
give that a go if it becomes the pvp brawl of the week or however it works i don't really know uh but yeah have a look at that and just kind of imagine yourself in that vanilla experience because that's what they've done and it's really cool i actually didn't even realize but it's uh it's really fun and it's actually yeah it is a really good pvp brawl but it is weird to see like the old um the old map and stuff like that with the new textures it just it's doesn't just really in the work. game yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah any, anything else from you guys before we go to the q a uh, i'm eager for the q a i think, I think this will be fun this will be a good time okay uh i, I want to go ahead and uh, i'm going to hit twitter first right so again you can tweet at us and uh just just hit us with the hashtag class cast that's what i'm looking at um first one is from fishy and and actually fishy uh fishy brought this up uh, a while back too uh, I think this is a great question. Will the use of the new client affect the game's in-game lighting engine, or is that something that they'll be able to reuse from vanilla? Uh, this is from Fishy wow. Lawn. No. Oh, that's a really good question. I think it's a really good question. I, I think that's a hard one to answer for me personally. Uh, I can tell you what I want. Uh, I, I don't want the new lighting. Like I, I understand, like you know, that they they do this and they make it look nice or whatever. Uh, I I think the lighting will take away some of the feel, uh, especially if they have the old graphics in. Um, which I, I'm again highly assuming that they're they're, they're not going to mess with the graphics or anything at this point either, um, mm. but uh, but yeah no I I I, uh, I do not want to see that and hopefully they don't do that with the uh, with the old graphics that's that's what I would see um, you guys I think yeah. that's quite hard though that's super <laughs> that's like really I would, I would imagine from a technical point like that's pretty difficult to do yeah um, yeah damn I didn't ne not even think about that. That's, yeah, I don't yeah. know. And this is, this is knowing that they're downporting, right? That, that's, that's why he brings up this question is, uh, again, that's something that I would, I would like to not see personally. But, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that is a really good question. I think it's a good, uh, uh, I think it's something, I mean, that's something that I would like to find out. I, I would like to hear, hear what, they, what they plan on doing with that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like, the old lighting might still be in the game files. We, we just don't really know. Um, but yeah, then, wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I, I can't answer it, of course, um, but I would prefer not. <laughs> I prefer not. Just keep it how it was. Mm -hmm. It's a great game how it was. Mm -hmm. I'm the same yeah. way. With, with this stuff, you have to ask, like, why would they do that? Yes. Why, why would they do it? Who, who, who are they trying to appeal to? Are there people out there that are thinking, okay, I'm thinking about playing Classic WoW, but I'm not going to play <laughs> unless, they, unless they have new lighting. If there's, like, <laughs> who, who are they really trying to sell this to? Like, like it, it's just kind of a weird thing, you know? Here's the thing. I think what Fishy's trying to say is is not so much who they're trying to sell it to. It's what if that is a consequence of them downgrading the game from the modern infrastructure? So it's like, I don't think they're going to be right. actively trying to implement the new lighting. But what happens, you know, is there some kind of technical restriction where they can't downport the game um, without keeping the lighting as, a, as it is now in the modern game? I, I've got no freaking clue, to be honest, Fishy. Mm -hmm. And I answer the same as Stay Safe. I don't know, but I'd rather it be what it was. So yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I wish I wish I knew more. I wish I knew more, but I I just think that's such a great question. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there because um, I, I think that's a that's a good point to bring up. Um, yeah. I've gotten this from that's a enough. few people uh, actually. I I want to I want to go through Twitter just because these, these people asked a while back. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the all the tweets, but I want to I want to hit a few of them uh, just because there was there's a number of them. I see some good ones here. Yeah. Definitely. Um. There was from uh, well, from a few people. They were talking about the uh, the add-ons. If yeah. basically if it's going to affect the API, uh, I, I like that. A few people were asking about the the uh, given that they're downporting the modern system. How do we think this is going to affect the API? Um, these I think are going to use the same as Legion. I think it will. I think there's a chance that it will as well. Like I, the same I as think, the retail. Uh, Stay safe. Mentioned before with the old API, there was like all crazy stuff you could do with it. I'm sure you can tell you all about that. There's a bunch of weird, quirky things that you wouldn't want in Classic WoW that you can do with the vanilla add-on API. Absolutely. I, I, this is a change I actually do want, and I have no problem admitting this. I hope they have Legion add-on API for Classic WoW. I hope they do. Yeah. <clears throat> is uh... It'll be restricted, though. You wouldn't be able to do everything you can do in Legion. Obviously, like, bring up, you know, achievements tab and stuff like that, you know. It, right, of course, add, of like... course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, by, yeah. by API, we mean, we mean the capacity to which you can do things with add-ons. Right. I want them to restrict. In Vanilla WoW, it's very, very open. You can do a lot of weird suspect things with Vanilla yeah. WoW Powerful add scripting. Yeah, and they've closed a lot of those doors over the years. I want them to restrict it down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe they make a new one, like, for add-on developers. 
Yeah. Because every expansion they adjust it anyway, so to be honest, they'll probably just make a custom one and be like, guys, I know you've been making these awesome add-ons for one point one point uh one twelve, but unfortunately they ain't gonna work anymore. <laughs> Go yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll make some new ones. I think uh I, I like personally I would like them to keep the old one just because like that's just it, it is what it is. You know, that's that's vanilla to me. Uh, but you're right. There are a lot of crazy things that you can do. Like the scripting is very, very powerful. Um, I don't think they should get rid of add-ons. I don't. I mean, that's add-ons were in from. I mean, they, they've been in vanilla. You know, they've they've been there. They were there back in the day. They're there now. Uh, but I, I, I basically, I, I think if they keep everything from that perspective, just the same as it was, I, I'd be really, really happy with that. Uh, but given that they are downporting the game. I think uh, I think it is likely. I think I think there's a chance that it, they keep the same API unless they they are able to pull something off, right? Yeah. What do you What do you think, Tips? If you have anything on that? Honestly, I would not like. To, I mean, it's I know it's inevitable, but ideally, I would not like to see add-ons more sophisticated than what existed back in vanilla. Although I know that's not going to be the case. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like obviously, if there's an exploit, if there's some kind of you know clearly broken. Uh, or like almost like a cheat that's being used through, you know, add-ons or through certain macros, then obviously Blizzard has to address it. Like at the end of the day, an exploit's an exploit. If Classic WoW launches and we discover a new exploit that no one's ever discovered before on previous patch 1.12.1 clients, then Blizzard should, should fix it, obviously. A bug is a bug, a cheat is a cheat. Those should never exist in the game. Um, but yeah. That's so you're talking about exploit versus bug versus oversight and design, essentially, whenever you start talking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, yeah, like if, if somebody makes a mac, like an add on, if somebody makes an add on that kind of ties into a macro, but it tells you, like, I don't know, I can't think of an example, but something that really trivializes part of the game that was never intended to, to ever be like that, okay. I think Blizzard should be like, okay, like the, the decursive thing, they should yeah. break it or something like that. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they did break Decursive. I, I can't remember what patch. I think it was 1.7, but they, they it was around that time where they broke mm -hmm. Decursive, and uh, th they've, they've managed to fix it again. They've managed to figure out a way to make it work again. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's just, it kind of goes back to what Stay Safe is saying. It's like, it's, it's very open-ended, and it allows you to do a lot. Now, whenever I think of, like, a, a robust, um, basically, uh, the, the ability to make add-ons that might take away from the game experience that exist in Legion right now, exist in the retail version of the game right now, that didn't exist in Classic. I, I personally can't think of anything that, uh, that, nothing comes to mind, but I, I'm also not some, I, I'm not a retail add-on expert, honestly, right? Yeah. Uh, but can you guys think of anything that comes to mind? Because I, I can't. OQ, if OQ comes to vanilla, I'll be really upset. I'm not gonna lie. What, what is o OQ? It was, it's like the pre-made group finder tool today. If it comes to vanilla, if you're able to group up with somebody without communicating, without having to be in a guild, you know, and literally leave and never have to meet that person ever again, I don't know. It, it rubs me the wrong way. I don't like that idea. Gear score too, but if you ask me to pick between the two, I think OQ is worse than gear score. Well, well, gear score, gear score would be a noob trap. Right. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's not or it wasn't whenever it came out because of how optimized the game had become. But mm -hmm. in vanilla, wow, gear score would be an absolute noob trap. I mean, there's items that are like, you know, you, you might be wearing like item level 60 something gear and item level 80 something gear together. And that item level 60 thing is, is one of your best in slot pieces, you know? Yeah. Like on use or proc effects or itemization is so funky in vanilla. Wow. That gear score, it would be very, very hard to do that. Yeah. But well, from what I've heard, what you could do is you could take your stats, like you actually like crit stat, like your what's your crit, what's your hit, et cetera, and then take that value and transfer it to an actual numerical score value. This this can't happen in the original vanilla. It, there's no add-on for it in original vanilla, but I've heard you can do this today with modern add-ons. So well, yes, you know, while having a you know the raw item value might be irrelevant, it might take the stats of your character and weigh them and be like, okay, your score is this because you've got this amount of crit, this amount of hit, this amount of defense cap, whatever. You know what I mean? Right. But I think something like that is. I mean, that, that's something as, as simple as like taking your stats and just like, okay, well, I know like stat prioritization, like crit is really important, strength is really important, this is important. And then uh, basically going through that and, and almost like just theory crafting, it's basically like a calculator to me at that point. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't like, I mean, of course, like, well, it's, it, you don't want to be trivialized down to like a score, down to a number. But mm -hmm. uh, to me, that, that is something that's just like, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's just theory crafting to me. 
Like it's like a calculator. And uh, as far as the OQ stuff, I remember there being add-ons and even in Burning Crusade, they just put it in the game. They put like the, the group finder in the game where you could go and, and you could queue up and you could list yourself as LFG so for whatever. Scuffed. Yeah, no, nobody used it, right? No, nobody used it, and, and maybe they could make an add-on that's better than that. But uh, OQ I, was I, everywhere. When OQ came in MOP, everyone was using. Yeah. It. it was much better. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah. And I didn't. And like I said, like I didn't play MOP, or uh, you know, for me, like what I'm what I'm trying to say is like I I think that people might not even use it uh, as a uh, in in vanilla. I don't know. Like just from from Burning Crusade, it might be different now. I but, mean, it's uh, only as good. Is, is how many people use it though isn't it yeah, That's yeah. The thing. so know, like if, if nobody it. has it then like everyone's like okay like i can't find a group because not, exactly. not as many people have it but everybody's in trade chat or maybe even like if somebody makes a custom world channel or something right yeah yeah i mean they i would actually be i wouldn't be surprised if there was a world channel they're so common now like every single time it's there's some sort of world channel yeah and it's always full of such lovely people <laughs> yeah so yeah it's uh, it's special it's very special uh let me see if there's uh i'm, I'm gonna do one one more twitter check real quick because uh, there's a lot of questions now uh let me just pick one out um uh let's see um okay um, this is from uh, Jacob Peterson, right? Oh, no, 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 that was the wrong one. Sorry, misread it. Uh, this one's from Flemstone. On the topic, Poor Jacob. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, this was this was from earlier. This, that was from earlier. Flemstone. Uh, on the topic of post raid content, what do you what do you guys think about the raid difficulty additions like heroic and mythic, under the notion that there's no increase in power level of gear that drops? I, I think this is mo the reason I want to answer this question is because it can kind of clarify a lot of stuff for people who might not be familiar. Uh, the raids are just more difficult to simulate than, or to stimulate the, a challenge. Hold on, the raids are just more difficult difficult to stimulate a challenge. So, so what this question is asking is, uh, what about like heroic and mythic and this kind of stuff in classic? And really, I want to, I, I want us to hit on this. But, but with no additional rewards, right? Well, he's saying, he's saying, under the notion that there's no increase in power level of gear that drops. Right, um, right, okay. So just do it for the thrill. So yeah, it's just for the bragging rights or the thrill. Mm -hmm. Right. I think uh, I think stuff like that should not even be a thing in the game. Personally, um, I, I, that's just you know my personal opinion. I, I think you know just going off of like the keep it as much vanilla as it possibly can, as much no changes as you possibly can. I don't think that's something yeah. that is particularly good for the game. I don't think it's healthy. If you add that and then you want to add rewards for it, then that's a whole nother issue. That's I think that's unhealthy for the game. That's a lot of what we're seeing now. Um, I don't know. Do you guys want to? Do you guys want to hit on this? Dude, I think that content difficulty is one of the things that destroyed WoW. So I would absolutely not like to see that in the right. game. No I, offense, I, bro. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that's not that's not a knock on on, on you. I just uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I not you. I'm talking about the question. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> the guy. Whoever but, asked. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I, I I thought that was good to just kind of like clarify like a, a stance on it. I guess. Yeah. Um. Let's let's hit uh, let's hit some questions in the chat. Uh, will yeah, they fix been... weapon skill? Actually, here you guys yeah. pick up. You, you, oh, let's let's do this. I did let's... see the weapon skill one. He keeps spamming it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, they will. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anything anything that's not right on a private server or whatever. I'm. Not even, I mean, I, I feel like it's very safe to assume that 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 would be fixed, right? Yeah. You'd love to. All all of these mathematical values, or resistance values, armor values, boss damage values, all of these things. You you have to imagine Blizzard has all of these things logged. Mm -hmm. Wizard has the accurate values for everything. I can't imagine they're going to have like, I, I don't think they're just going to like pull, pull values out of the out of thin air, you know, when making classic. Well, I think they right. probably have all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're yeah. they're they're a big time company. I mean, they, uh, you know, despite rumors, <laughs> they they have their stuff. You know, they they have the original code. I mean, I I you know I, I did computer science classes in college for a little bit. Like, I still have my stuff from like freshman year. You know, before I realized I wasn't smart enough, so I'm just going to play video games. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's the like pe people keep their stuff. They they for the most part they will, will have a lot of their stuff. I, w I would think uh, any any big company like that would. Uh, do one of you guys want to pick out a question? Something you would like to see? I like this one from Jace three three three. Okay. Uh, in terms of faction shared loot for shaman and paladin, do you guys think locking these tiers specifically for their intended factions would be detrimental to the game in any way? 
well, that's something that they did do. That that's something that was done in vanilla, and then it changed in the 2.0 patch, I believe it was. Uh, was it the 2.0 patch? Because I remember raiding MC at times and starting to get shaman gear drop, and but it right. wasn't. I think it was in the 2.0 patch, which dropped. I think in the beginning of December, about a month and a half or so, maybe maybe five weeks before BC launched. Uh, but this was something that initially, er, initially, initially uh, was locked to the factions, from what I remember. Uh, I, I I may be wrong about that, but I I do remember not getting shaman loot in in raids until uh, until after the 2.0 patch, shaman tier. Yeah, I, yeah. I, can't, Do, I can't remember that far back. <laughs> yeah, not personally does sure. It happen on, uh, does it happen on private servers? No, it doesn't. Oh. I, I could mean, be wrong, but that's, that's what I remember. I, I never remember getting it, but I wasn't like a master looter. I was just like a typical raider. But I remember people complaining about it a lot after uh, after the 2.0 patch hit. Yeah, because 2.0 would have brought in all the systems of yeah. TBC without the TBC. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Kali, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a very big question i mean what do you think will happen after classic vanilla do you think there will be a classic tbc classic wrath that's a very big discussion mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. i think with the inevitable success of vanilla if it does as well as we all hope it will be i think two years down the line blizzard's gotta look at themselves and be like you know what we should probably do tbc like i just yeah. i don't see a scenario where they go damn it we're making so much money <laughs> we wish we could release TBC, but we're not going to. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I, I hope that every two years they offer a new classic, you know, whatever the next expansion is. And I think that they also continue to host, you know, when, T when classic TBC happens, I think it probably will, that they, that they re-offer another classic vanilla option. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, there's one from Maxitor that says, uh, how much will you miss the international field now that classic WoW will be time zone Pacific? Uh, they haven't actually said that it is going to be time zone specific. Uh, we did talk about this before the stream, yeah, we and did I would love it if it was international. Like if they found a way to kind of like pinpoint where you are roughly and just put you on that kind of server like latency. I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to do it. But like, yeah, I would love it because you know there's so many like established guilds and friends, like so many friends out there that are international. And when Classic comes out, they're gonna have to like play different places yeah. you know i'm actually going to play on the u.s server because i am i have no irl friends who play wow and uh so yeah i'm going to be on the u.s servers i'm going to put up with latency but yeah i i would love it if they had international realms even if they had like like if there was like a choice if you could be like international realm eu or us mm -hmm. because it would be cool but yeah i mean i don't think it's going to happen unfortunately i think uh I, I think that's something that just from like a almost like a quality control standpoint that they would go in and, and they would set servers up in regions uh if for this specific case they had like one or a very small subset of servers set as like international servers and they were put like uh i don't know maybe in new york or something you know somewhere where you know close to europe uh, I, I think that would be something that is uh that that'd be something that would be cool. I think that would be something that would be cool because there's so many friends, dude. That that's the biggest thing I'm gonna miss. Like I've made so many friends, uh, you know, either they're they're playing in Asia, they're playing in Europe, um, playing all over the world, and uh, that's that's one of the big things that the classic community kind of has, and and it's uh, it's developed into over the years. It's an international community. Uh, you know, some of the best friends I've made, you know, uh, like those of you guys who used to watch my old streams, like you guys remember Spooji, you know, he, uh, you know, he'd, he'd be playing on European servers more than likely. So yeah. it's, it's stuff like that where it's, uh, it's kind of rough. It's, it's, it's kind of frustrating, but I mean, that's just like a, it might just be like a fact of life. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. I had read a if while. If they were back. really your friends, they would play NA. <laughs> they <laughs> would move. Just play they NA. Would just move. everyone play NA. <laughs> I like, it's not that bad, actually. Uh, when I was like playing on a European account from the US, I was only getting like 120 ish ping, which yeah. in vanilla is not that bad at all. Like you can deal with 120 ping in vanilla. Well, yeah. but, un but unfortunately, um, I I'm not entirely sure about this, but I remember reading a post a while back. The reason they split up the regions beyond like the technical problems with it, but I think there's actually like some licensing laws and localized like localization laws where like some regions need to have the game look and appear a certain way, or some regions just have certain laws about like how you can distribute games and stuff like that. 
So that's one of the reasons why if you play in the US, for example, and then you move to Europe and you want to change your account to a European account, you can't do that. There's like mm. some legality there. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. So it's, I don't know the full details, but I remember reading like a forum post about it a while back. Yeah. I that think, uh, well, something, something else about like the 120 ping and, and I've, I've, I've told this story several times before, but uh, I, I specifically remember that 200 was the cutoff for green latency at the beginning of vanilla and they ninja changed it, right? People were having so many issues with freaking latency, people mm -hmm. complaining about lag that Blizzard Ninja changed the uh, the cutoff for green latency from 200 to 300. And it wasn't in the patch notes, it wasn't anything. But I remember I always had yellow latency because I, I would be hovering around like 220, 250 or whatever. And I was like, oh man, I'm not lagging at all. This is good. And I scrolled over and I was like, what the crap? It's the same number. So uh, <laughs> I, I do think it's something to, to consider. Like you don't need quite as good of ping. Uh, you know, back in the day, like people were playing with like 200 ping and, and it was fine. But uh, I think from like a competitive, like more PVP standpoint, as opposed to PVE, it kind of depends on what you're doing. That latency does does uh, come into effect. I, I think that does play a factor. It's going to be a sad day. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's asking about uh, Black Arrow asks, do you guys think we will have the legendary neck piece from MC? I assume he means drop for just like one guild. Yeah. No, just let it let it have one person have it. I think that'd be cool. It. That'd be cool. That's like that's a cool flavor thing. I don't I don't know or think if they'll I I don't know if they'll do that. I don't think they'll do that. But if they did, I think that would just be something cool, like just paying homage to the uh, to the necklace talisman of the binding shard is what he's talking about. Blizzard's yeah. usually pretty good about Easter eggs like that. Who knows if they'll do it? They might but... not even announce it. Yeah, they might just put it in the yeah. game. Yeah. If I would bet on a company to do it, I would bet on Blizzard, but I'm not sure if they'll do it. Yeah, that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, let's look through this. Uh, let's see. What do you think about race distribution? People playing certain races that are best in slot, like Dwarf Priests, um, or best in race, whatever you want to call it. Uh, deal with it. That, just deal <laughs> with it. I mean, that's, that's part of game knowledge. People yeah. want to play what's best. People just want to play what's best. There's a certain demographic of people that want to perform very well. If you want to do that, then that's what you should do. If you don't, then being a casual guild or whatever, that's just how yeah. it is. Just do whatever you want yeah. to do. Yeah. Just have fun. I mean, do. I know everyone, not everyone wants to play a gnome, but they are the superior race, unfortunately. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, that's true. yeah, I mean, it's it's just like, you know, some people, they, they f fun means different things for different people. And the thing that's really good about vanilla WoW, something that's really good about classic WoW is that fun meaning something different for you and another guy is totally fine because you can accomplish different things in the game and you can get a lot of fulfillment out of it whether that's you're going and pushing speed clears you want to be server first to this raid you want to be whatever you want to get a 20 minute mc clear whatever you want to do like that's fun for some people right for other people it's fun playing a rep paladin raids right for other people it's it's fun to just go in pvp you don't want to pve at all and I think that's great. That's great about Vanilla WoW. That's great about Classic. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's an issue. I don't consider that to be an issue. I think that's just that, that's just a fact of life, and, and that's the nature of it. Yeah. yeah, it's like when people ask you, like, what class should I play? It's like, play whatever the hell you want to play. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to dictate yeah. your fun. Mm -hmm. I actually I get asked that question all the time. I, ha I actually have started people's fun i just tell them play no more luck just play no more luck. <laughs> that's just, good just do it just do whatever i tell you yeah no more luck thanks for asking yeah. pink hair breaks yeah. dps <laughs> there is one thing i want to say about it um he, he said dwarf priest that's the example he used right right so like one thing you have to understand is we we don't know yet how big the populations of the servers are going to be if we're in a scenario where blizzard decides to release three thousand concurrent pop servers which we don't know they may they may not but if we're in that scenario, I think people are going to be a lot less picky about what races are played. Just because you're not going to have that many Dwarf Priests available for Alliance on a particular server. When you're on a server with 10, 12,000 people, you can be picky about certain things, about certain classes, certain specs, certain races, because you have the luxury of having a pool of 12,000 players to pick from. I'm just not sure yeah. that'll be the case if Blizzard chooses a small server. I'm not saying they should cap it at 3k but if they cap it at 3k mm -hmm. uh, if they cap it at 5k whatever it may be population is going to infect stuff like that a lot more than yeah. you think yeah, i also i also huge 
I really, really believe this. I think what is common practice on private servers will not be common practice on classic WoW. You have yeah. to imagine the private server, the vanilla WoW player demographic, those are hardcore, super vanilla WoW hyper addicts, right? Mm -hmm. They've taken the step to play in a, an illegal version of the game. They've downloaded the client. They're accepting that at any moment, the game could be like the servers could go down there. All of their time investment could be deleted. These are like hardcore vanilla, super tryhards, right? When Classic comes out, you're going to have a lot more casual, you know, just like pick up the game and play, not really like not much beforehand knowledge. There's, I think Classic WoW will be a lot more kind of free for all. Everything's going to be, it's going to be just like a, a softer experience Classic will be than, than private servers. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think you're right about that. Uh, there's a question I want to hit. Uh, I, this kind of goes in line with what we were talking about with the beta a little bit earlier, and, and Fellerin is, is asking about this. He says, uh, Blizzard says that they're using 1.12. We covered that. Uh, are we getting the pre-1.7 or post-1.7 debuff slots? Well, they, they haven't said, right? They haven't said particularly. Uh, I think with the way they seem to be approaching it, with the way they seem to be approaching it, going with the 1.12 base, I wouldn't be surprised if they just went straight 16 debuff slots from the beginning. But uh, with that being said, that's the kind of thing that, again, you go into the beta and you need to test the beta stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I, test the stuff in the beta, excuse me. Uh, I think that's the kind of stuff they got to look at. You know, if, if they have 16, if they have 8, how, how does the... Um, now, they haven't said either way what they're doing, but I think that it's, there's like two sides of the coin, right? Like if you want, uh, want 1.12... Okay, let's say you want 8 debuff slots and you want it to change at 16, and then... Are these the same type of people that, that want the honor system and the honor gear from the beginning, right? Uh, all, all that stuff is there's there's a number of, or there's a, there's a few levels of depth to uh, every single decision that they're going to have to make in this regard. Like, how does this affect PvP? How does this affect PvE? How does this affect raids? How does this affect five mans? How does this affect how people are going to approach the game? How does this affect how people are going to acquire gear? Uh, I, I think it's it's a very, there's a lot of layers to it. And again, I think that's something that they're going to have to test and look at in the beta to decide what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, I mean, from your you guys' experience, what would you say? Would you say it's that much easier, like yes. to kill the boss? Yeah, it's it's a it's a very big mistake to launch with sixteen debuff slots, in my opinion. That would make a lot of the early content easier. Yeah. Yep. Well, that would be a big mistake in my mind. So, I'm sure so like a cap, though, surely. Well, Let's well. See. The, 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 here's the thing with, so looking at your experience with the 16 debuff slots, particularly for stay safe, stay safe plays a warlock. Uh, the reason why this is such a big deal for warlocks is because, uh, you have shadow priests now that, that become uh, a very viable member of your raid because of the shadow debuff that they put on the target and it makes all your warlocks do more damage. Um, you also got to consider, so you have 16 debuff slots now at 1.7 patch. But prior to that, you also had your Warriors in rank 14 gear. I mean, like, the, the meta... So here's the thing. The meta for raiding in Vanilla WoW at the high end, you want to get a bunch of guys with rank 14 gear and rank 14 weapons. You want to get a bunch... Like, freaking get 12 Warriors, 12 Fury Warriors, rank 14 gear, rank 14 weapons. If they go and get the PvP gear, they don't have to compete for drops, and then they can fill in the blanks with, you know, DFT and whatever through there. But they're going to have the bulk of their gear coming from PvP. Uh, and I'm looking at like the 1.6 patch, right? This is the patch before the the 16 debuff slots. Um, I don't know. Like again, I think there's just a lot of different tiers to it. There's a lot of different layers to it, and uh, I do think it will make. I mean, surely there's more debuffs. You're going to do more damage to the boss. Bosses die faster. Uh, yeah. Game is easier, right? It's that that part is very simple, very straightforward. But uh, if you're looking at it like that, then uh, it kind of goes back to the other discussion. Well, they're already adding 1.12, right? They're already they're already starting off with 1.12. So, are they going to go back and retune? It, it's it's all the same discussion. Like the the beta is going to be so incredibly important to test all this stuff and to actually look at the actual numbers and to make an assessment, make a decision, and, and to go forward with that. Hmm. That's what I think. There was okay. uh, another one which I've seen a lot. The uh, from Divine Earth. I've probably butchered that. Uh, opinions on adding content after um, after Nax, I guess. Uh, for me, I would. I think it'd be cool, but if they did it on a different server, yeah. <laughs> like 
you have your next, you have your people doing that, and then maybe on another server that's completely different, throw in some Karazhan, throw in some Hydral, throw in some, you know, Cams of Time or whatever. Uh, but yeah, keep them separate. If you're going to do something like that, do not piss off the people who uh, you made this for originally. Yeah. That's uh, basically what I think. I think it would be cool, though. I would love to see it. Um, to like do the features that they kind of intended for vanilla but ended up pu pushing over to tbc but it would get pretty mad honestly it's just yeah, a, it's, I, sorry go I was, ahead i was just gonna say it's like cost to benefit ratio if you have an option of releasing a game like tbc to your audience and you know they're going to pay for it and it's only going to cost you one dollar to release that game hypothetically speaking versus spending a hundred dollars on developing new content from the ground up testing it qa qc all that stuff what would you do if you were blizzard would you release the one that's going to cost you one dollar or the one that's going to cost you a hundred dollars personally that's what i think they're that's how i think they're going to weigh it but i i would love to see it as mr gm said on a different server i'm just not sure if it's you know if it's worth it for blizzard well, look at OSRS, right? So, so old school RuneScape, it, it, old school RuneScape launch, and this is this is probably going to happen with Classic Two. Anytime something is this hyped, anything, any, anytime something is is this big of a deal, you're going to have this big burst, this big surge at the beginning, and then it's going to taper off. It's going to drop, right? The big difference between OSRS and Classic WoW is that Classic WoW has expansions. And I also exactly. think that one of the one okay. of the big things like Classic TPC and Classic Wrath, etc., Classic Cata, if you want Classic Wad, I know you guys are talking about that. Um, all the classic WAD fans in chat. Sign um, me. <laughs> so expansions, and also I think the, I honestly think the biggest selling point of Classic WoW is the community. That's why people can replay Vanilla WoW so many times. Is, is every time you replay it, you have different community interactions, and you, it's like it's more of a player-driven thing than the, than a content-driven thing. Right. Uh, old school RuneScape, it's it's honestly a lot more single-player. It okay. really is. I've never played RuneScape. Mm -hmm. I, I was just I, I was yeah. just calling on it. Um, yeah. So I think I think that's a really good perspective, and and you play. I know you played a lot of old school, um, yeah. so you know a lot more than I did. Um, no, you're you're very right. Old school RuneScape it died within like it was very close to dying within two years of release. It had huge hype and it got very close to dying. And they had to add, they added new content, mm -hmm. um, but you know in that two year time frame, you relaunch a new vanilla server or you uh, you you release classic TPC. That's what I want mm -hmm. them to do. I don't want I don't want any new vanilla custom content like. I hear the art this argument all like, oh, why don't they add, you know, like 40 man Karazan to Vanilla WoW because it was in like the files and like they were going to do it anyway. But they didn't. And <laughs> it wasn't there. Uh, yeah, so I don't want it. Yeah. Well, I, so I'm, I'm a little bit more on, on the line of uh, the, the line of thing that Mr. GM is. Uh, I think if they if they decide they want to do something like that, I do think it would be cool. But I also think that it, it needs to be done on a, on a different server. Like you, you have the option to like character copy over and play there. Uh, you have the option of staying 1.12 forever. You have the option to character copy over to TBC, uh, or you have an option to uh, you have an option to uh, reroll fresh, and, and they do another set of fresh classic servers. And like you said, there's people who are going to play that forever. There's people going to play that for years and years and years and years. So yeah, there's there's a reason the fresh meme is as meme as it is. Yeah, like, people it's a meme, love yeah. fresh vanilla, dude. People yeah. love fresh vanilla. <laughs> Yeah, it's because, as you said, you know, every time you play Venero, it's, it's a different experience, you know, different community, everything like that, you know, you're, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Every time it's a different adventure, I guess, would be yeah. a really cheesy yeah. way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, counter all sorts of things. You can never predict what happens. That's what's good about right. it. Right. Yeah, and exactly. whether or not they, they actually do something like that, I don't know. I, I just think personally, like, I, I think it would be like something that would be cool to see. Are they actually going to do that? I don't know. I, I think tips is thinking about it more more practical and it's like yeah. is it worth it for them who knows you know i think probably the devs not. would have a lot of fun with it though i think you got to think oh, it from their point of view I bet they they would would. Have to do it. yeah 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 but they're not the ones making the calls exactly the, guy, the guys the guys checking the bank account are, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah we make carousel it's like oh no we don't want yeah. it <laughs> i mean yeah. yeah they would have to hire a bunch of new team members as well because right now the people making classic wow they don't have you know a graphic team or a sound team they're just like kind of going through databases and making sure this this content is integrated with new hardware and software they'd have to hire new actual game developers you know it would cost millions of dollars like millions of dollars what why would you do it as as i think it would be cool actually i am with us fan stays and uh and mr gm on this i think it would be cool but why would you do it when you have tbc right there sitting in front of you right and especially yeah. when when i'm not sure that a patch 1.13 would be more preferable to tbc in fact i think it'd be the other way around 
I think people do want to play TBC again. I know I would love to play TBC again. So who knows? Uh, we'll see. I, I don't think they'll do it that way. But we've gotten this question like he's been spamming it all day. I feel like we got to answer it. <laughs> uh, Little Bear TV. What do you think about using a streamer report function for griefing that allows right. streamers to use their video proof to show the person <laughs> doing so and putting a three strike protocol? Essentially, <laughs> uh, what do you guys think about streamer griefing? I, the, I, if you choose to play on a PvP server, you've made that decision. Yeah, <laughs> I don't you've like made that. your bed. You have to sleep in it. You know? As like a that. streamer, as a streamer, I want to be able to permanently ban at a whim anyone <laughs> I want at all times. I don't want no. to be banned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I do not like that. I do not like that. I think uh, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's right or fair to to give a, I, you, sh you shouldn't modify the game for the streamers. I, I think that's inherently something that's probably not a good idea to do for your game. Uh, now, if you're talking about like, if you catch something crazy that's happening, and you have video evidence of it, whether it's on stream or something, then, uh, you know, you can report it and send the video as like, hey, like this, somebody's like fly hacking or OK. I mean, that's that's one thing, you know, uh, but that's that's not like a streamer specific thing to me. Um, here, you guys, yeah, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. And yeah, know, sure. Play. I think there can be extreme cases of griefing and camping that are not unique to streamers, but that streamers will probably experience the most. So let's say you're a player and uh, it, 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 it will probably happen to me. I'm a streamer. Let's say I'm in. Stranglethorn Vale, and this guy and his friend are camping me. They camp me, you know, ten times. I try to re I try to res back, but at least they camp me. Uh, I, I spirit res at the graveyard to try to leave, and they camp me at the graveyard. Uh, and I, I literally can't get away. I log out. I come back 30 minutes later. I get some food. I come back. I log back in, and uh, I'm able to hearth, and I go to uh, Arathi Highlands, and I level in Arathi Highlands for five minutes, and then they show up again. They camp me for another hour and a half, and their graveyard spawning, camping me, and all, and all this. It's like they're on a mission to do that. Um, such great viewing uh, as well to watch on stream. Yeah. Well, it, at, at that point, it's, that's not a, that that can happen to anyone. That's not a streamer unique problem. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. can happen to anyone. I think that would maybe qualify as player harassment. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the way I see it is this: if you're a streamer, you're streaming classic WoW. Yeah, there's going to be consequences, but there's also a lot of freaking perks, man. Like if the first eye of sulfur, if you're a big streamer, if you're like an Asmin or a Soda or whatever, the first eye of sulfur goes to you. You're gonna wake up every morning, log into the game. Oh wow, 20 gold in my mailbox. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, everything, you, you get such preferential treatment. Dungeon group, oh, instant group. Raid group, instant spot. Streamer privilege is a real thing. So I guess I don't have much sympathy for somebody getting ganked as a streamer. Uh, because at the same time, you've got to believe that they're going to have their own counter army and they're, they're receiving so many other privileges in the game that it's like, you know, you got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But again, I agree with Stay Safe. If there's something that's so grotesque and borderline stalkerish, then obviously, you know, Blizzard should step in. But in normal scenarios, you're getting ganked for a little bit. You're a streamer. You're a big streamer. Call up your buddies. They'll come. They'll help you out. I don't see that as being a big deal. And even if they don't come, cry all the way to the mailbox where you got 600 gold waiting for you. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Someone just said uh, Blizzard, he said uh, he got a warning from Blizzard for killing a level 60, uh, 20 levels in the Barrens or something and got reported. So he said to Blizzard already do that, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think that in, in extreme cases like that, and this can happen, like I said, regardless of whether or not you're a streamer, uh, this can happen to random people. Uh, if like if someone is just having a, 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 a bad day and they just want to camp you for nine hours like that that happens that happens to random people not streamers necessarily um, I, I do think that that would be player harassment I, I know that Blizzard does uh, uh, intervene in those situations on yeah. Reason, yeah. Yeah. yeah in other words I would expect the rules as they're applied today to be applied in, in classic whatever they are I don't know what they are but whatever they are they'll probably be applied the same way yeah is that Swan back yeah, I'm back. back. Sorry, I was trying to read a question and I can't comprehend it. Um, <laughs> is it the one about Fortnite? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to. I, I don't know what the question is asking. Will uh, they add uh, Twitch Prime skins? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I think. I don't even know. One button to play. Christ, nice. <laughs> I don't know. Is he asking if the kids are going to play Vanilla WoW? I think they probably will have Twitch Prime skins, and you can preemptively sub to S Font right now using Twitch <laughs> oh. Prime to just oh. make sure it happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh man. 
Uh, let's let's go back to Twitter a little bit. Do you guys want to check Twitter and see if we we got some questions on Twitter here? I think the stream froze right now. Oh, is it really? My bad. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. There we oh, go. God. Sorry about that, guys. No, it's good. It's good. I, I know what's wrong. Oh, you just uh, yeah. yeah is this better? Is it working now? We're good. Okay. Yeah, good. we're good. Are we sure. good? Yeah. yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, so going back to Twitter a little bit. Okay, equal equal opportunity. That's what we do here. Uh, let's see. Hashtag ClassCast again. At us and then hashtag ClassCast. Um, and that's that's what I'm checking for, for tweets here. Um, <clears throat> latest. Okay. Vanilla Collector's Edition. Uh, original Vanilla Collector's Edition. I'm just oh, getting that's a good one. That's uh, a good yeah. one. Yeah. I think that would be great. Like, if you that have the original Collector's Edition to keep the original pets, is that what the question is? Yeah. You want to know something? The other day I looked at, you can still buy actual vanilla WoW collector's editions. They're four and a half thousand dollars. Wow. That's They're four and a half thousand dollars. Jeez. That's insane. <laughs> that's crazy. That's like yeah, wild no, to think um, about. That's actually like a kind of a interesting question where you can extend it onto, if you have proof of purchase of the original WoW on your account, will you get it for free? If they are reset, like in, let's say, for example, they are reselling uh, Classic WoW as a game and a part of the subscription service as well. If you have proof that you were playing back in that time, would you know? Would it be cool to give you like maybe a discount code or maybe even the game for free? I'd I'd be down for that, but obviously, I mean, there's a lot of issues yeah. with that. I suppose where you could have had an account back then and then just you know not played it. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I actually Tips and I were having this conversation the other day, and uh, <laughs> so. It's it's very it's very nice having your original account. Uh, it's it's very valuable uh, for me right now. Like that's that's just how I feel about it. But for the longest time, whenever I quit WoW, I quit WoW for a long time. I felt burned because I got offered a lot of money for my account and I didn't take it. <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I had a bunch of gear like end end of Burning Crusade, and I ended up quitting like within two months. I think I, I ended up quitting within two months of getting offered you know a lot of money for my account because I had this and that, yeah. and I was you know really highly rated and all this stuff. Um, I was like, frick, I should have taken the money. But now it's like, well, my account was freaking active November twenty ninth, two thousand four, and I have this, and I have I have a couple pieces of Nax gear and. Like it's it's cool, right? Yeah. yeah, and it's not it's not next gear that I earned in Nax at sixty. It's next gear that I like I, I got like ghoul skin tunic and the uh, um, Stygian buckler, and I just got those at level seventy. Like I, I ran Nax like yeah. with a pug once, um, but yeah, no, it's it's stuff like that that uh, I, I think it's very cool to you know if you can reward those people that got the original classic uh, collector's edition, that'd be pretty sick. I I think that'd be uh that, I just think that'd be something nice. That'd be something cool that they would they could do. Give them those original pets, and then maybe you can get a classic collector's edition. Uh, I, I don't think that you should have to. This is my personal opinion. I don't think that you should have to buy BFA to get classic. Uh, some people might feel otherwise. Uh, Blizzard might feel otherwise. But I think if they released a classic collector's box set where you got maybe like a, you know, like a DVD where it explained like you know making of the process, how did this happen? You know, just some, some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe get some in-game vanity pet. Some, some stuff like that, I think that would be cool. I think they should release that and then make it separate than the original Classic Collector's Edition uh, in-game rewards. I think, I think those would be cool. It's just a tidbit, isn't it? It's just something small. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be fine. I'd be fine with that. I don't think you'll have to buy BFA, but I fully expect there to be a Classic Route box price, you know, $30, $40. And I, I think probably, um, you know, I'm not a Blizzard market analyst, but this is what makes sense to me. I think probably the Classic WoW subscription fee will be tied into the, the retail WoW sub fee. So if you can play one, you can play the other because you're also paying for it. I think that probably makes sense. Uh, I think there will probably be points where if you're playing, B if you're a BFA player, you might be bored one day and you want to play Classic WoW. You'll check it out. Or if you're a Classic WoW player, you might be bored one day and you'll want to try BFA and vice versa. I think th I think yeah. that crossover is actually really good for a healthy like WoW ecosphere in general. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If if we had the option to play both, I'm pretty sure I would never quit WoW because you play one for a couple of months, you get bored. You play the other for a couple of months, you get bored. You go back to the other one. Oh, new new content patch for this one. Play a couple of months. Oh, new content patch for that one. Play a couple of months. Like, it would just keep you completely enraptured by WoW. You would never want to leave. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. You, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. you never leave. Do you think they'll, um, 
<laughs> you think they'll uh, time the patches for BFA and Classic? Perfectly? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll yeah. they'll definitely try to supplement them together, like two months to three months per back and forth. It would be, why not, right? Why not? Yeah. I mean, if you're raid logging in vanilla, you know, you can just uh, do BFA in the, in the meantime. You know, you've got the hardcore kind of vanilla stuff, and then on the other side, you can go do pet bounce. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I do think that's something that's healthy for the game, is is having a shared sub. It's very, very healthy for, for World of Warcraft. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like like you guys mentioned, uh, just, just being able to play one, you're in a content drought, you're bored, you're whatever, and you want to go and, let's say you're, you're, you're playing classic, you want to do your thing, you farmed up your raid mats, you got your world buffs, you got to log off, what am I going to go do? Well, who knows? I might go log on BFA and do some arenas. You know, I might go do some battlegrounds on, on BFA. I might go do something like that. Um, I think about it from my perspective. I I would like to play arenas. I would like to play arenas in BFA. Uh, I I really enjoy arenas because I'm a crazy person. Uh, you know, like I, I I like doing that stuff in in uh, in, in Legion right now, and and uh, I, I expect to do that in BFA. But uh, classics definitely going to be my main focus. You know, of course. Yeah, I, I think in, in a weird way, I think if BFA is successful, if they have that crossover sub, I think it will make Classic WoW more successful. I want both games to be very successful, and I want both games to be very good. Yeah, it's just good for it's good for the game. It's good for WoW. Yeah. 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 Cross yeah. marketing. Yeah. There you go. Uh, let's see, I. I uh... There was a question about war mode in. in... <laughs> In classic, I, as much as I kind of like the idea of war mode, I don't think it has a classic at all. Yeah, I don't think uh, I, that that's not something that's like in the that's not vanilla, right? That's not, that's just yeah. something that's not vanilla. Um, changes. Yeah, I, I think uh, I do think I do think war mode is is a great idea for BFA. From what I've seen, I haven't really done much of it. It looks good. War mode and BFA it, looks good, but it's, really cool. it's something that's totally like that's just not vanilla. Like that's not that's not. That's not what yeah. vanilla is, right? Along with sharding as well, phasing. Um, and it will be in the client, but I don't think they're going to use it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, is there is there anything else you guys see? Anything else you guys see that you want to hit on? I, I skip seeing this question. What are the chances that 1.12 Classic will have actual digging in PvP? I have no idea what that means. Like That's, that's the guy, he, he comes in my chat and asks about <laughs> digging. <laughs> digging? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm so like, confused. Holes? Digging to be, yeah, like digging holes. Yeah. Taking souls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the digging guy is here. Yeah, just a, just a role player, the dude. Digging. Just role play and dig holes, double dude. when you're digging. That's all you want to do, dude. Uh, <laughs> you do you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so do you guys have anything else? Is there anything else you guys want to hit on? Um... Uh, I think we've been going for a while, right? I think this has been pretty good. Uh, it's been very good. Yeah. Uh, w one thing, just to kind of like wrap it all up here, um, just kind of my my own take on it in a nutshell from the news. I, I think the news is very good. Uh, I think they generally want to go, generally and genuinely, seem to want to go with a, a no changes esque type of approach. Uh, there's going yeah. to be some technical limitations. There's going to be some things that they have to hit on. Um, that you know it, it may deviate a little bit some people consider is 1.12 a change is, is 1.12 not a change um but they are going with a 1.12 base it's going to be uh you know they, they want the authentic vanilla experience there's going to be some things like battlenet integrated uh modern anti-cheat botting detection uh modern customer service it seems um but they don't want to do anything that's going to affect the, the core gameplay experience in a nutshell um other than that, I think uh, I think we're good. I'm gonna continue streaming. Uh, do you guys have any? Do you guys have any uh, other last bits of information? Anything you guys want to share? Yeah. So for me, thank you guys for watching and tuning in, uh, Mr. GM. Thank you, for your guest today. It was, mm -hmm. uh, you're you're thank, really awesome. Thank, awesome. thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. So again, please, if you guys haven't already, uh, please follow Mr. GM. Follow Stay Safe. Follow Tips Out, baby. Uh, all that stuff, you can see their info on the screen right there. You can see it underneath their names, their Twitter, their YouTube, their Twitch, uh, myself as well, SFAN TV on every platform, Tips Out Baby on every platform, Stay Safe TV and Stay Safe Warlock on Twitter, and then Mr. GM or Mr. GM YT for YouTube. Uh, 